question zero with and you guys we are live if i can find the button to change the thing hi hello everyone there we go closing the very bright window now oh <laughs> yeah. yeah i'm there under i'm go. still under the assumption that um light mode anything on a screen is Yo. is a war crime it is why i can't have a word processor with a dark mode i will never understand right the sweet sweet release right now of yeah. dark mode huh. i i agree with that entirely yep. except i do use light mode in roll 20. It is the only uh, one I use in light mode to be really honest. dark mode. I'm in dark mode for all twenty. It, yeah, it, the the character sheet just looks weird to me in dark mode. Same. I think it's because I'm used to using the like physical paper character sheet, so that translates one to one with Wait, the light are mode you, character are, sheet. Yeah. There, are you telling me you don't have character sheets printed on black paper? I <laughs> would if I had a printer capable of it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm right there with you, cool. Fox. Oh. It's the character sheet that just weirds my eyes out. It's yep. the only See, program I use with, with light mode. I just can't otherwise. I've tried. Other DMs have probably seen this, but depending on the monster that you open the character sheet for, some will be in dark mode and others will be in light mode. Any of the original <laughs> like Monster Manual 1 monsters do not have a dark mode setting and it will just be light mode. Yeah. So... Funny little tidbit about printing a whole black sheet of paper. I'm a health professional, and once I was an idiot when I was younger and tried oh, to print no. out an x-ray. Oh, no. Oh, no. On the laser printer. Oh, no. Oh, I may no. or may not have God. set the laser printer on fire. Yeah. Which would uh, you could have years of university education and still be a deep dive moron when it comes to technology, because, yeah. I set the office printer on fire by trying to print an x-ray once. That is a true story, and it was quite hilarious. I, at least you got a good story out of it. I did. Uh, wow. I mean, you got a new printer the next day, which the old printer was a piece of junk, so you know what? Maybe it was good that I finished it off. But yeah, don't try printing x-rays at home. See, those are the kind of things that spawn words of wisdom for people down the road. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. I once had a student try to lift a... A bunch of pipettes out of a chromic acid bath with oven mitts. Ah. That's something you'll only do once. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I can't hear Rochin. That's because I'm muted. Oh. I don't know why do I was I muted. I was like, wow, this is a long pause. All right. Cool. Right? I said, cat, and we you were just let us go on. And everybody started talking. So I thought that we were, like, everybody heard me say we were live. No, we did. We did. We did. We did. And we then did. you muted yourself. How the fuck did I mute myself? I didn't even press <laughs> we were, the button. We were, no, we were all talking about dark mode and you even commented on it. And then yep. you just yep. were muted yeah. the last no, like, no, 30 see, that's seconds the thing. minute. That's the thing. Do you have I a cat just... in your room? No, she's outside. Oh, that's eerie. Do you have a ghost in your room? Probably. Yeah, I, paid it, I paid it off. So. I mean, we technically have four ghosts in the house, so maybe. maybe it's not the first time me. your mixer has muted you on yeah. its own. Yeah. So. Cannon Mall discreetly unsummoning the tentacle. <laughs> Note to self. Was there a numlock 30 more involved? hags after Cannonball. <laughs> Never <laughs> finds his dreadnought. For a kilogram, as they say. Never finds the dreadnought. <laughs> Oh god. You know what? I still have two wishes. I'm gonna wish myself to that goddamn dreadnought. Then die in a vainglorious death, but I will get to that dreadnought, goddammit. You'll get there and it'll just be like a 164th scale dreadnought. Yeah, it's a goddamn toy. Or you're hip, you put on it and you find out that you're inside a snow globe now. I was gonna say, yeah, was gonna, right. you, you and I were on the same wavelength. I was gonna say a boat in a bottle. Yep. <laughs> Not your dreadnought, but that's about it. I can die happy now. That's fine. Oh. Uh, you know, speaking of things that are might not die happy. Um a certain uh imp servant to Pearl was sort of uh caught stowing away last time after you all escaped a horrible situation in Tidelight when the 
Goldspar Manor collapsed into the ground. A portal opened and began to rain infernal beings upon the city streets, causing mass pandemonium and panic as the guards try to gain control of the city. You lent a hand as much as you could before deciding it was time to leave. Taking on as many survivors from Tidelate as you could on your ship before heading out to sea, not really knowing where to go. And as everything was slowly being processed by every, everyone as to what the hell just happened, a meeting was called from Jenka for the captain and the senior staff. While this meeting was going on, Shara was a little bit absent as she had her own stuff she was trying to process. But after talking to another uh, fellow Hakarl, found out that her parents are on board and later ran into your, I guess you would call him the newest crew member yet. He hasn't really been given an assignment just yet, but the Zelotian druid Skarin came up with this small orphan looking boy encased in a water bubble. When he identified it as not a human, but a imp in disguise as he's able to see through such things. Shara and Skarin went in with the disguised codger. And as we left off, Earl has admitted just now that that is codger that is in the bubble. And we are going to pick up with maybe a couple seconds after those words have left her mouth. Okay, Cap Captain, please, please let me say my piece. The the urchin in the bubble, uh, Thomas Tupenny, it is Codger, yes. Um, I'm a druid captain. I respect life in all its forms, and my actions came from a place of compassion. When I signed the papers for the search of the estate, I think it might have triggered the attack on the city, because it all seemed to happen at that time. And then during the fight that followed, as we were making our way to the ship, I didn't think things were going well. I thought Echo was going to die. I called Codger to help. I, I didn't even think he would come, really. But he did come, and, and he helped turn the tide of the fight. But, but then he told me that the estate was at the center of the explosion and was completely destroyed. That, that, that's my childhood home. There's nothing for him to clean and repair there any longer. I intended to deploy him as quickly as possible, somewhere not on the ship, for sure. But there are things he won't do. Um, I wanted him to guard my brother because I had a meeting with Mel that I haven't had a chance to tell you about. And Mel told me that my brother, Gulliver, is going to sell Goldspar Metalworks to what it was sort of like the Fey Mafia. And Gulliver was, was never a very astute business person, and I don't think he realizes what he's going to do. I know that he's at Stormbreaker Landing, and I would like to stop him. Uh, Captain, I, I realize that none of this is your problem, but I really ask, I beg for, for your mercy and, and your forgiveness and, and your assistance, please. The problem is, it's now my problem. There is a demon, disguised even, on the ship, after I just said no demons As on board this vessel. You say demon, you see a very almost hurt look on Codger's human face. No, don't you dare give me that look. You have no right or feeling to even give that kind of look. Forgive me, Captain, but I believe the look is because you are calling this 
imp a demon. So technically, he's a devil. Calling him a demon he's is an insult. He's from hells. I don't give a shit. They all come from the same place and do the same thing. And you you see a very like a concerned look on Scarin's face as he wants to um actually you, but he he holds back. Not the she, right time, buddy. She, she yeah she knows, but right now don't <laughs> the care. Rage all the, the rage is winning. The rage is winning. Okay, Captain. All right. If, if how about you can put Codger and I overboard. I, I had hoped for a small boat because I intend to go to Stormbreaker Isle. But if you said earlier you thought that that was a waste, waste of resources. Okay, fine. So pay me out the money that I put into the ship in gold. Let Shara give me back my spiral notebook. Toss us into the ocean. We'll call it square. No hard feelings. I just want the demon off the boat. We are okay. planning on going to Stormbreaker anyway, but that thing, you, despite doing this behind my back after what I asked, so simply I thought, I actually would like to have you on this ship, girl, but that thing cannot be. I don't want him on the ship and either, Captain, but I didn't get a chance to send him somewhere where he would go. You, you see... Yeah, you have one. You see... Codger kind of like closed his eyes for a moment and a small like astral projection of Thomas Twopenny sort of appears on the table. Uh, if I can say something, Captain. Don't Pearl call me that. had nothing to do with it. Codger was only following Pearl because of what was going on in the island. Codger saved your lives or helped save your lives. Codger cut off the head that, of the big demon. Or that's devil. supposed to be indebted to you? No. I did what I was told. I only do what I was told. I do not act outside of the master's wishes. If an action is done by Codger, it is because the master wills it. Codger doesn't raise a knife, a blade, or a garrot towards anyone unless it is the master's wish. Codger, well, in all sense, is a good boy. Captain, if I may. What? While I very much agree with your, well, distaste of the Eldritch, as you're quite aware yourself, I may or may not have been tricked only a few days ago in, well, as you remember, Carrie into carrying well something slightly worse than an imp in me chest yeah it's called a heart I'm kidding she doesn't say that I kind of <laughs> lost that one a long time ago Captain but I'm nice kidding. try uh, that being said that being said while I do agree with the once again distaste of the eldritch and he, he, he's going to look at Pearl and he's going to say, Pearl, did you voluntarily enter a pact with this creature or were you saddled with it? I was saddled with it. He comes with the spark of genius, which we also haven't really had a chance to talk about. And I... Captain. I, oh, sorry, Pearl. I, one, one second. Sea Captain, I think intent here in this matter matters as well. And if you'd be so kind, maybe let Pearl give us a little bit more information since this does not seem voluntary. Here's the thing. I was there when this was explained, when this happened. I am fully aware this is why I suggested that if he has to obey her to keep him away from the ship. Not hovering five feet away, not hovering above because technically not on the ship, not anywhere near here. I was there for that. I am fully aware of it. Again, I actually want to keep Pearl here. The assumption that I want to throw anyone overboard, yes, though is quite tempting right now, 
I only really have two issues. I know I'm a new captain, and I may not be the best, nor do I really want to be captain right now, but these are the cards we have been dealt, and I am doing oh, my it. best. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> but here's the thing. Simple requests ignored. Other orders it wasn't ignored. ignored, Captain. I didn't ignore your request. I fully intended to come back to the ship without Codger. He was to stay at the estate. You know that. Then why the disguise? The estate was destroyed. So how why can he Codger be there? Why is Codger disguised then? Codger is disguised as to not scare anyone who may see Codger. Seeing a little urchin boy is less frightening than imp. Is he still the boy right now? Yeah. Change back right now. And he kind of looks over at Pearl. Don't do it. I am sorry. I, am I cannot change. I am getting tired of everybody ordering me around and trying to order Codger around. You don't seem to understand. He does what I say. Then tell him to change back. Why? Because I don't like his form. Well, I don't like your attitude, Captain. I put money into this ship. I came aboard this ship in good faith. And I don't think that I'm being treated very fairly here. You're not giving me a chance to sort out with Codger what he can do where he could go and let him go there. Why won't you give me the time to do that? What is your great rush to have him off the ship? Captain, if I had died on in that battle, my soul would be Mel's lunch. Okay? And then, yeah, Codger would be gone, and then you'd be rid of him. That would be lovely. But I'm just not quite ready for that yet. So you all got pissed off when I somehow got us into a deal that I didn't... No, 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 to. no. This has nothing to do with that. Why are you going back to that? Because of assorting with demons and imps. One is oh, not okay, but one is. I'm confused. None of it is okay, but I'm stuck with it. I'm stuck with the curse. I'm stuck with the spark of genius, which I don't even honestly know yet what that does or what it means. Pearl, and if I may, yes, what the captain is trying to say, and captain, correct me if I be wrong. What I be understanding here is for the captain. Well, the captain feels. You know what, Captain? I'm not even going to speak for ye. I'll ask directly. How did ye feel when the crew responded the way they responded with the whole Mal business? Because I feel like this is simply a return of the pendulum that'll lead to a cycle of, well, because you did this, I should do this, and let's be real, none of us have time for this with death breathing down our necks. hard to do anything when I constantly feel betrayed and not listened to and then blamed for things that were out of my control it's what Mal does Mal looks to cause discomfort Mal looks for weakness in one's armor and then tries to exploit it's all part of his game Look, to be clear, I can't speak for anyone else here, but I never blamed you for the situation. I simply seek to rectify a loophole. And yet I feel betrayed because it wasn't even discussed with me. I just get letters. You weren't available. On that note, Pearl, you could have simply knocked on the door. Out of character, I know that really sucked because I wasn't actually there. I know, <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, it, 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 if, I, if I may, I feel like the whole letter thing is actually my fault, and that spiraled in a direction I did not intend. Um, as far as the whole Mal thing goes, Jacob, I'm, I'm sorry if it, it felt like we were 
kind of piling shit on and blaming you. That was never the intention. Uh, I didn't, I don't blame you for any of that. The whole letter thing, um, I thought that would be a way to prevent that from happening to us again in the future. I didn't realize that when I wrote the letter, the rest of the crew was going to write a letter at the same time. And I totally get how that feels like we were just abandoning you. That was not the intention. I'm sorry. Wasn't the intention from any of us. We still, as we put in the letters, we were there for you. We were waiting for you at the inn. We were willing to work through everything with you. We simply were trying to rectify a loophole. Make sure that it could not be exploited a second time. I'll tell you, Echo, that's not how deals with devils work, but it was a valiant effort. Excuse us for not being experts. Well, see, Echo, this was a little bit of me grip, gripe with you when it came to the artifacts as well. If you have an expert available, consult them. If somebody who's been through something says, Hey, Echo, this may not be a good idea, or it be for a reason. I don't become an old pirate by making mistakes that get me killed, or worse. And so, the simple reason why I was so ired on you these last few times, for the ret hard, is simply because I, like me crew alive, and not dead, or shattered to pieces, or enslaved to some demon, or losing their souls, or otherwise butchered, cursed, or, well, turned into me. Uh, well, here's the thing. Go ahead. Oh, don't go. I, I was just going to say, Bill, you, you kind of bring up a, a good point there. If we have an expert on hand, it's good to get their insight. But I think part of what has made all of this into such a big problem is none of us know if any of us are, are experts. Really, none of us know anything about any of us. We haven't Here. really had the opportunity to discuss that and so there's a lot going on here where people are taking things in certain ways because of experiences that they've had and we don't realize that it's having that impact because we don't understand that we've all been through various things that have made us take things in this way am i hearing like oh my god the backstory time <laughs> <laughs> I, I think there's been a lot of misunderstanding happening here, but it's understandable misunderstanding. It's not like an instance of, oh, you're taking that the wrong way. It's, oh, you've been through some, through some shit. Indeed. But Shara. I don't realize that because I don't know the shit that you've been through. Aye, Shara, and I think that this lack of experience, as you call it, or put the label you wish on it, is the only reason nobody's been whipped or keel-hauled off the ship yet. Well, here's my issue, is you make an assumption that you're an expert on something that no one else knows anything about it. You don't give any of us time to explain anything. You just assume that you know, and you make decisions for us. A captain and a first mate matey's job is to direct the crew so that they don't die. And yet, when I joined this crew, I was told that those were just labels. That they, we decided things as a group, and those were for the crew, other crew. So that they had someone to look to. You mean... Is that not the case? You mean... Wait, you mean with the previous captain who got us in this mess in the first place, and isn't even around to pick up after herself? A fine job she did indeed. Well, as far as I knew, there was no declaration of that changing, even when they changed captains. So is it the hierarchies in place when it's convenient? Or do we make groups as a, a decision as a group? Well, matey, the way I see it is you have a voice, like any member of a family. But if you see a child in the family jumping off a cliff, do you stop them or let them die? The child might not realize the cliff is dangerous, but ye as an adult, what do you do? Hmm. Let me put it to ye this way. And if yet, when I asked you to have a simple conversation, you told me to just follow orders. Matey, there's a time and a place, and that was not it. Yeah, how about a time and a place is asking how I was without the intent of trying to figure out something else? You realize not a single one of you asked me how I was after I died and I was brought back. And the only person who did was you, and that was when you were looking for additional information. Not even willing yes, to explain to me why. My priority is, this, is the safety of this crew, and ye had been in contact with an eldritch artifact 
that messed not only with your life killing you, but bringing you back. Well, yeah, no. you did. Burn I'm sorry. Talking, I'm... But you know what I'm talking about. I wasn't the only one in contact with it. It was the only reason I came back was because of you. Well, you're welcome, but that's not the point of the discussion. No, the point of the discussion is, do we make decisions as a group, or are we supposed to simply follow orders? Meaty, as that's I said. the problem that I have done a couple times, actually, is I have both... I've done it both ways, and both just blew up in my face. Aye, the point I was trying to make myself. But I thought when we weren't on the ship, that it wasn't quite the same. It is. So Captain all the Captain time, Captain we have Lander's to follow feet. your orders. 100% all the time, no matter where we are. So if you say jump, and we're in a bar, we say, how high, Captain? Is that how it is? Essentially. If Kodri may speak out of turn, it sounds like any other contract. Much like how Kodri is tied to Master, Master is tied to crew. Look, the way I see it, each of us have a role aboard this ship. Mine clearly is a failure, as I sh am supposed to see to crew morale as the first mate. And well, morale right now appears to be, I'd say, at the bottom of the barrel. But if we got to the bottom of the barrel, it means we had drunk some rum and we'd be in a good mood. But that being said, while I may have failed in my duties in that particular respect, one thing I will not fail is keeping this crew alive. I do not give orders out of a wish to control, matey. I do not tell ye what to do. You want to go to the bar and have a drink, you know what? Do what you want on your own time, it's not a problem. But if I see something that may or may not threaten your life, matey, you better damn well believe I'll speak up. And speak up you should, but have a conversation. Tell us what's going on. Well, don't I'm just sorry, come at us with matey, questions don't have and be pointed. I'm sorry if I don't have time to give you a nice, lengthy explanation that's three hours long about what may be threatening our current crew if it's about to kill you. Mm, it took about five minutes to have that conversation. You did have the time, because we eventually had it. And you got a lot more answers out of it that way. And if you had chosen that route, you would have had even more answers. If you don't like the way I do things, you can take the job. But the reality of it, again, is that my duty is to keep this crew alive, and I think so far, I've done a pretty damn good job of it. Uh, I think perhaps part of the issue with the whole orders thing is maybe clarification, because I do understand both points of this particular discussion. In a situation where danger is imminent, you know, something's like charging at us with a big axe in their hand or something. Yeah, there's no time to explain. You, you just tell someone to do something and hope they do it because their life depends on it. But in other situations where, you know, we're rummaging around a basement and there's a book and you say, don't touch the book. Well, there is time for an explanation. And in those situations, so far, there hasn't been an explanation. So I understand the frustration from that point as well. So I think there needs to be some compromise here, otherwise we're not getting anywhere. Well. Tell you what, Shard. I could make this very simple. And I'm saying this to all of you. You will not hear an order out of me unless it be requested by our captain. Or unless I have some reason or another to believe that your life may or may not be in danger. As such, I ask ye for your understanding in return that if I say something you don't understand, please do listen until I do have an explanation or time to give ye such an explanation. How's that for a deal? Do we have an accord? I mean, it sounds reasonable, but also, I, Bill, you've got the hardest job on the ship here because you are 
the voice of the crew to the captain, and you're also the voice of the captain to the crew. You know, you're, you're the bridge that, that connects us and keeps us happy on both sides. So, I mean, what you're proposing sounds great, but I also know it's really situational. I... So I, I don't envy you in the position you're in. It's the hardest job on the ship, but it, it is a job that is meant to keep both the captain and the crew happy and things have got to constantly be changing depending on the situation that we're all in. So I'm with you, but I'm also with Echo and, and the rest of them. I understand their point as well. So I, I don't really know where to take it from here, but I think if we all just give each other a bit of leeway when it comes to this shit, because I think a lot of the stuff that we're facing, none of us have ever faced before. So, as you say that, you, you'll see Cannonball sort of deflate. Um... If his posture had seemed belligerent earlier, he, he, he now looks his age. You can see that he looks like he's taken on a couple of years just from you saying that. He'll look up and he'll say, Well, matey, that's the problem. I have bumped into these things before. Did not go too, too well, I'll tell you this much, and clearly I'm repeating the same mistakes all over again since the, since the captain and the crew are at each other's throats. And for that, all of ye have my apologies. And this cannonball's apologizing. Yeah, no, he fucked up. Well, um... Bill, despite everything that we've been through, like, butting heads up to this point, I do consider you a friend, so I'm sorry I'm about to make your day even worse. Here we go. <laughs> cannonball just, like, oh, pops here we open go again. up. You, you, you just hear this... As Cannonball opens up a <laughs> bottle of rum. You know, most people pull out a flask, Cannonball just pulls out a full bottle. Do his, do his tentacles go big or go home. For this. <laughs> go big or go home. <laughs> and for the record, I don't want any of us off this ship. A crew is a family. But yes, Shara, please go ahead. When I went back to check on my family, um, I think I bumped into the one that was behind this whole like demons falling from the sky thing uh, her, her name is, is Lady Pigma and I'm so sorry Bill it's a hag have you heard of that name before? yeah I was about to ask Rojan Bill you absolutely know who Lady Pigma is uh, you um uh, Zoro, you could go ahead and give me a history roll, but okay. Bill, you know specifically who Pigma is, because Pigma has a thing for Cannonball. Oh no! Like a thing or like a thing? thing. <laughs> like a thing. A thing. She, what you didn't know is my ex-wife was a hag. She wants Why Cannonball. Come over, come, come with me sometime. She wants I Cannonball mean. all to herself. Gross. You know what? If I count, if I had to count how many people want me soul or some part of me all to themselves, I'm running out of fingers. I rolled a and start using toes. You rolled a twenty. <laughs> he doesn't have any. <laughs> you, you rolled a twenty-two. You said. Yes. Yes, you know damn well who Lady Pigma is. She is one of like the higher ranking. If they had a rank order in the uh in like the the in the hag's cauldron she would be the equivalent of an admiral she is one of the higher ranking and more powerful hags on the sea wielding multitudes of influence she is also a worshiper of the rot which is gross jenka will do the the 
oh god, fuck damn it, kind of like slow head turn, sigh, looking over Cannibal, and she goes, her fucking tome. Not what about it? That was hers. All the better that we burned it. No. And why not? not? Do you know who she is? I clearly, intimately, if I may say, not in a good way. That is one of the few hag tomes we should not have destroyed if only we knew. And why not, matey? I mean, Captain. Because that's how she came to Tide Light. Matey, tomes give hags their powers. They don't keep them out of town. Well, let's say this was more of a summon or a trigger. Then I'll tell you this much. That was not her tome. Maybe a proxy, a copy, or a splinter. Well, like I said, it was a summer or summon or a trigger. Uh, if well, Codger has a question for Shara. This Lady Pigma, thin lady, grayish green skin, long black hair, very wet. Yeah, with like a patch over one eye, and she uh -huh. had this like staff that had like crow skulls or something on it and like mushrooms and shit she uh, did visit the master time about yeah. four five years ago she said she could keep Mal away from him and he'd allowed her to place a what she called a protective enchantment. But Roger believes that wasn't an enchantment. Yeah, um, she did say that she didn't expect her, uh, what was the word she used? Um, she didn't expect her bud to come to fruition so soon. So regardless of what the trigger was this whole mess was in the works for a while. It would have happened regardless. Yeah, but we sped it up. Might be maybe we did, maybe we didn't. Maybe it was gonna happen today regardless, and we just happened to be the people in that spot at the time. And if it wasn't us, it would have been someone else. Uh, it also could have been bringing me back. There, There's something else. Um... Codger told me that when the house was destroyed, the estate, that it sort of solved my problem because it meant there would be no evidence. Uh, like, in not really incriminating evidence, but there, there, there wouldn't be repercussions for me. And I said, but there's no repercussions for me. What, what, what would there be? And apparently there was a whole horde of magical items, illegal magical items, but not the cannon. I, I asked about that, but not the cannon um, that were destroyed when everything blew up. Um, so I, I have no idea what, what that means. As I say, I haven't, I, I just need a few minutes. To, to sort this out and, 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 and to deploy Codger, and there, there just wasn't time. I, I'm so sorry. Wait, I so didn't want him on the ship. Codger told you that the magical items were destroyed. But not the ones that he took from Grandfather, but everything else. Codger, are you sure? Because Lady Pigma did say that they'd be excavating that area. The items could still be there. It Codger assumes they are all gone. Codger did not stay to look for proof. Um, there was someone else with Lady Pigma as well. Um, and I have a question mark next to this name, so I may not have heard it correctly at the time, but was it Everden? Sounds about right. Sounds about right? Okay, yeah. 
We'll go back to the VOD later. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't know if they were like uh, Pigma's, I don't know, general or something, or if they're just another person in on this mess, but I mean, if they're walking next to her, they're probably somebody to be concerned about. Well, let's just add to this some more. Um, pretty sure something did happen when you brought me back, Cannonball. And I say you because I was told that it was because of you that I was being allowed to return. I opened a book, matey, but yes. Yes, and that's why I was able to return. Ah. I was stuck in that orb. There were others in there. They weren't quite themselves anymore, which is why I was curious about it. I was hoping to figure out who else was in there with me. But they said that uh, the door was being opened because you had opened the book. I thought you said you didn't remember anything in there. Yeah, well, at the time I wasn't really sure how you guys were reacting. I wanted time to process it as I, you know, had recently died. You, you did get your not, head bitten off. Got my head bitten off. Wait, wait, let's not lose our heads true. over this, Captain. Stop it. Just I knew stop. one of you was going to make a damn pun. Get over, <laughs> get off the ship right now. Work, okay, quickly, we're right? okay, all over. We've now learned the <laughs> limit of... Words, we have now learned the hall. limit of what constituted a keel haul. Not bringing right? a devil on the, bo uh, on the ship, but no, making a no. bad pun. Yeah. <laughs> Too soon. <laughs> Get the fuck off my ship, keel haul your ass right now. <laughs> right, like I'll I... the dang thing. <laughs> well, you know, I had just died. I wanted time to process it. And, you know, at the same time, I was also a little mad because, again, not a single person asked me how I was doing. Y'all just went about your way. I did ask how you were feeling. Yeah. You and Cannonball came up and did that, but only when you wanted information from me. Yes, including how information you were from you. I asked you when you came back to life in my arms. I asked you then. I rewatched the pod. You didn't. Well, then I thought it. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to make damn sure I knew that before I made that accusation. <laughs> While we're piling things on, there is more, unfortunately. Well, let's get you done. Oh, yes. Um, I overheard Pigma say, while she was melting my house around me, um, that the Chosen was in town, and they must not harm her. So I don't oh, know the, the... what or who the Chosen is. That would be me. That's what I was getting to. Uh, oh. Yet more things. She's no longer in town. <laughs> and uh, what's this chosen business? I'm not entirely sure, but I woke up with a... Call it a new ability? New Comes gift? with a bit of a compulsion. Um, I'd actually used it on the demons, and that's when they all decided to leave. And one of them thanked me. Um, Never good when a demon thanks you. No. no, and actually I was hoping if Codger is willing, he might be able to give us more information. Maybe you would get some idea well, what now, it is if I use the ability on you. Now here's the thing, Compulsions okay? We're, we're all real keen on asking Codger questions and finding out information from Codger. But Codger's not supposed to be here. He's supposed to be not on the ship. So which is it? Are we going to, you know, I mean... Now we're, is the we're, opportunity. The opportunity that you here. were asking for a moment ago, that's now. Okay, all right, fair enough. Codger. For the record, I haven't asked him shit other than the change. Well, and I didn't feel that that was necessary. And honestly, I'm asking, I'm not saying I'm going to do it to him, I'm asking if he would be willing to see if the ability, you could tell the same information the other de devils did. So it's not an order, it's a request? Yes. Yeah. Jenka Good does walk out at this moment. Captain, one moment. She's already gone. Well, this is totally useless. And uh, Jenka, as you go to leave, Scarin shuts the door in front of you. 
like to leave my quarters, please. Then I would like okay. to allow you to leave, but fate has decreed otherwise. What is fate? That is a question for another time, as it is a long-winded explanation. Captain, the reason I asked Kodra for this favor is because the compulsion is to use this ability every day. It's not a good thing. This may no, be something not. of something your expertise can lead in, Captain. Who's Captain? asking? This is Scarin Why? saying this. No, 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 she's at, she's saying that in character. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> Captain, why are you so unwilling to talk things through with us? I'm not willing to talk about or to a demon is my problem. Codger is not a demon. Codger is a devil and not really a devil. Codger is just an extension of master. Oh, lovely. I'm from the hells. So if you're um, an extension to, of me... To be fair, Codger's never seen the Hells. Codger was cr created out of a rotten apple. Fitting. Um, so Codger, you just said you were an extension of me. So then, with that logic, if you are a devil or a demon and the captain seems intent on you being a demon, then that would make me a demon captain if if he's an extension of me, so... No, it actually makes me a, a gnome. Oh. Ah! It works the other way. <laughs> and, and as he says that, he snaps his fingers and Thomas Twopenny transforms into a gnome. Stop doing that. <sighs> Captain, you're you're doing it again. I, you're ordering around. I apologize, Roger, and he, you can't. I apologize if I'm making you uncomfortable, Captain. It's not. Yes, you are. It's not Codger's intention. All Codger wishes to do is help. Well, Codger, we have a few moments here. Uh, please let uh, Echo. Uh, here's it, the trouble. I can't do it today. I already did it. Oh, what? What, that's... what did Echo do? I attempted to disease those other devils. That's when they recognized something. How? Disease how? Like I said, I, I came back with a new ability. Oh, like some creatures can turn invisible, and some things can fly, and some things can I mean, I can, I can levitate sizes. too, but I've been able to do that since birth. That's normal for a Ganassi, Eric Ganassi. But, but you're you're saying that this kind is new. Of new, like yes. Hey, and reach I out and touch somebody in that orb. and disease your favorite gnome. Yes. Ew. Don't look at me like that. With a compulsion to do it every day. Ew. And a sick sense of joy that comes with it. Sounds more like a curse than an ability. Yeah. That sounds... Sounds like fake curse, honestly. Codger, any... I, I, I mean, she can't do it right now, but... You can do it tomorrow. Thoughts about it? Well, he may not be here tomorrow. Codger doesn't know what to say without seeing it in action. And we have a ship full of innocence. This is going to be great. You could use it on Codger. That's what I was hoping to do, but I just can't do it until tomorrow. Codger, if... Codger is immune to most disease. Most. Mm -hmm. This affected the other devils, though, and that's why I'm a little worried. But you came back with it, and it was only after we burned the book of, or read from the book, opened the book, from the book. some apparently high up hag who is 
the envoy of a god of disease? Will you survive that, Codger? Will you? Will you? Well, don't want to bring you harm. Won't know until we try. Um, if that sounds you... like swallowing a black powder keg and finding out what happens. Possibly a fun experiment. Codger, if you don't survive it, would Pearl still be okay? Or is this like a, if Codger dies, Pearl dies as well type of thing? Codger cannot die. Uh, okay, well, as if long you... as as long as Master lives, Codger is alive. Okay, to what well, degree if you get though? Inflicted by this disease and turned into a shriveled up prune, a living shriveled up prune, will Pearl also turn into a prune, or will she be okay? Master will be fine. Okay, if, that's good. If Codger were to and he puts up his fingers, die, Codger would simply reconstitute in a couple days. Oh, you're that type of alive. Yes. Cursed alive. But from my perspective, if, if, if I can interject here, it, it's sort of, in a way, it's like having a bodyguard or uh, insurance. Uh, like, if, if I don't know, um, like, He's going to try to keep me alive. And until I can figure out a way to get rid of the curse, I, I kind of like being alive. I, I really don't want to be lunch for Mel. Oh, and, yeah, and there was this nice. whole other thing about a banquet that you guys don't know about either. A banquet? Yeah. Mel invited me to a banquet. Oh, that's not mm -hmm. good. In my house. Uh, no. Nope. At, at the estate. You know, I'd and be happy I if I'd never saw Mel again. In Devil's Beak, that might mean you were the lunch meeting. Well, I didn't have a choice. I had to or go. Or us. Uh, I mean, so I went. I went to this banquet. Okay, and it was in the estate. You guys know what the estate looks like, right? So I go in, and like, it's magnificent. It's like it used to look when I was little. And, and it was beautiful. And he had a beautiful table set and all kinds of food. And I was a little rude. I said, you know, I thought you ate already, Mel. And then he said, oh, but the food isn't for me. It's for you. Uh, but I didn't eat anything. Um, that was probably smart. Good plan. But, well, I, I, I mean, I don't trust him. I'm stuck with this. He's going to keep showing up, obviously, to keep you know, checking on my progress, I assume. Whether I'm getting to be a more interesting soul to eat or something. I don't know what he does. But it, none of it's good. But he was the one that told me what my brother is planning to do with Goldspar. I was all for, you know, get rid of Goldspar. Uh, Metalworks, you know, let somebody else take it. It cannot be in any worse hands. But... Uh, is the Fae Mafia a really good thing? Is, is that better hands? No. No. <laughs> no. No. Nay. I was waiting for the one Fae creature to say something. <laughs> Absolutely not. Find um, the worst of the worst of pirates. Oh, okay, but... They are the saints among the Fae. But, Where is but, it that accusation? But, but... How do I even know if Mel was... I mean, there's no point in trying to guess if he's telling me the truth or not. But I don't know what benefit there would be in giving me more bad news other than to send us to Stormbreaker Isle and have us blow that place up, too. I mean, I, seriously. Demon? I mean, yeah. they... As Codger said, his lot in life, unlife pitiful excuse for life, whatever it is, um, seems to be to sow dissent and create problems wherever he goes. So, listening to information he gives might be a bad idea. 
So maybe yeah, I... we shouldn't go to Stormbreaker Isle. Maybe that's the last place we should go. Uh, I think we should continue on with completely ignoring everything he says until it's of any use. From Codger's experience, Mal doesn't lie. But does he provide useful information? Useful to all parties involved, including him. Yeah, okay. Oh, so... oh, oh, and there, there's more? <laughs> Somebody um... just dropped a pipe in the background. <laughs> uh... No, no, that was a cat food bowl. Oh, that, that, <laughs> that sounded like, like just like the Gary's Mod pipe effect. <laughs> um, uh, it, it, Matcha, um, it turns out Matcha also worked for my grandfather. As you, sometimes. as you say Matcha, she appears sitting right next to you with a little cup of tea. You called? Oh. Yes. Is it possible? It, it if it's okay with the captain, could I have you just pop over to Stormbreaker Isle and tell me whether or not my brother is there and is in conversations to sell Gold Spar Metalworks? That is a, I can't pop there. It's going to take me some time to fly my little butt over there and port back. I think you pro probably have a better chance of uh, sailing there. Oh. Uh. I, I, I can't necessarily teleport to anywhere except for my tea set oh yeah I mean that was kind of our destination before she hit the fan anyway so maybe it still is but um, as, as far as what Mal had to say I mean he could have just been fucking with you but also sometimes the best way to fuck with someone is to just tell them the truth so, or tell them the truth that benefits you, which is fey yeah. and devil protocol to a T. Uh, I mean, if we were kind of planning on going there anyway, I don't think it really matters what he said, because that was our plan anyway. Well, but I, going you forward, know what hurt the worst out of that whole dinner, though, and the banquet and everything? You had all that good food in front of you, and you couldn't eat any of it. Uh, n no. <laughs> the fact that when Mel did his poof thing and disappeared the room went back to the way it was. Oh, so he either illusioned or dimension shifted you. It's a fae thing. I mean, hey, oh. mansion doesn't exist anymore, so it's not like you gotta clean up the dust now. Uh, that Ooh. was my house. I mean, your home is destroyed. My yeah, home is my house melted too. It's okay. I get it. Yeah. Um, I've lost a lot in the last 24 hours. Trying real hard not to think about it. Um, you still have your family. So I've heard. I haven't checked yet, though. But, um... It, it, there is one other thing that's kind of the more immediate pressing matter, um, if I may. Clearly... Jenka has a history with, with devils or, or demons or something of the sort, and I get that now, clearly from the, the reactions here, and if she doesn't want to share that with us, that's her right to not share that, you know, it could be a very private thing, but this whole, like, made out of fruit connected to master thing, that you got going on, Codger? It's got me thinking. Are you, like, not actually a devil or a demon or anything? You just happen to have taken that form? Are you something else entirely? Codger is Codger. Was okay, it, but, was it but her you... grandfather that asked you to take the form of a name? You see Codger. He is... Codger was made, Codger is Codger. He is but... from there because I sensed him with that kind of aura. He is but, a fiend. At the same time, you sensed that I was undead one moment and the next moment I wasn't. How yeah, trustworthy is that ability? Thing. That is different altogether. 
How? I don't understand. I don't understand this person completely. All I know is that she's dangerous and she's kind of a queen among her people. If hags were to have queens. Okay. Um, how about this? Scared. You were able to, to track down Bodger, even though he used disguise. Can you, like, I don't know, look deeper into him or something, see what he actually is? Because if he's not actually a demon or a devil, and that was just part of his disguise, was giving off that fiendish aura, that makes things a lot easier. But if, you know, if he is a fiend, then... We still have a problem. I wish I can be the bearer of good news, but I was only able to find Roger because of their fiend essence. I was able to see through their disguise because of that. So is that like a, yes, he is absolutely a fiend type of sensor? I don't know. I don't know how this magic shit works. I'm just trying to find a way through this for us. I'm able to sense and detect fiends and pierce through the, the veil of their disguises. Does um, Tiefling show up when you try to sense these fiends? Did they come up as fiend? No. They have they do, the heritage. They do not come up as fiends. While they have the heritage, they do not have the taint of fiends. Okay. Try to see if maybe he came up with the tank because he was simply born of one. Well, he was born of an apple, apparently, but. I may no. never eat an apple again. Just don't eat the yeah, rotten ones. You might be eating more imps. So, unfortunately, it, it sounds like Codger is a, a fiend of some kind. So, you know, our problem still persists. But at the same time, Pearl, it sounds like Jenka is giving you this opportunity to have those conversations with Kodger if you want to have them, and then to send Kodger, Kodger off to wherever it is you decide you want to send him. Captain, would that work? It's funny how people always assume things when I never said anything, so yes. I even said earlier that you had an opportunity to send him away. I didn't say this instant. If you need information, get information. But I want this thing gone. Okay. Um. I just request that maybe we wait until tomorrow so I can get a little information from him if he's still willing. And Pearl is willing to if, take those risks. If Codger has... I am uh, willing. If Codger has a say in it, Codger would like until we make landfall. Codger's not a fan of swimming. You don't, but either way, I will allow it only because I am uncomfortable, not that this is your fault, I am uncomfortable with Echo's compulsion now, and I want to see how big of an issue that is going to be, so if it has to wait until tomorrow, fine. But I'm not comfortable. I do feel that a codger isn't actually doing a very good job of the invisible whole thing um it seems that he's still quite detectable i had hoped that if he was not in imp form that he would be less distressing captain for everybody else that's around and i i just I, you know to be I, honest, I, it's more uncomfortable with him being in this form okay what form would make you the most comfortable. His little imp form, because at least I can see it. Okay, all right. Codger, back to an imp form, please. And he nods and he just quickly, like, melts down into like a pile of pink goo and then like rebuilds into the, uh, the imp form. Is that easier for you, Captain? As long as he's not disguising himself. 
Okay. I think the better question would have been tra for him to turn into his true form, or if that is his true form. Oh, could we try that? Because then there's no disguises. Having him be an imp because you want him to be an imp. I mean, I do believe it's your order, Harold. Okay, Codger, do you have a... <laughs> do you have a true form? Codger is Codger. But what is your true, true form? If if there's no illusions, no anything, what is your true form? Roger. Rotten apple. Which is? <laughs> I was just going to say, if it was a rotten apple, I would As, die. <laughs> you see this poor thing's eyes just like spinning in confusion. He's like, Codger is Codger. Is Codger a gnome? Is Codger an imp? Is Codger an elf? Is Codger a potato? As he gets, he, he puts his hands together very frustrated. He's like, Codger is Codger. <laughs> what, what was the first form you took after you stopped being an apple? It's really confused for a moment. <laughs> Snaps his fingers, melts down, and turns into like a very bright, like a very not like bright pink but like just like raw chicken like color pug now I'm uncomfortable <laughs> yeah. not sure that helps Mal thought master may or former master may want a dog and that's yes, what you that came was... up with okay, Hunter doesn't so... know what dog look like uh, you look okay. like a sunburnt chicken Codger, how many masters have there been? Seventeen. Oh my lord. Oh hell. Uh, Sorry, poor Jacob. choice of word, Muir. Hell. <laughs> Seventeen. Why an imp? Because it was male. It seemed and it was a reminder to Master of their bond. Oh. Thanks. I think I hate to say this, but I don't think Codger has a true form. I there think is Codger... Codger. Codger is... Codger. An Codger. essence, not <laughs> a creature. Be honest, though? Imp seems fitting. Yeah. I thought he was kind of cute as Thomas Tuhan, but he transforms back oh, into out the of character? No, no, Codger. Uh, out captain. of character, I'm totally, pi I'm totally picturing uh, Lucy from Disenchantment. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Little demon, like, Pew! Yep. <laughs> this whole mm -hmm. time, that's what I've been picturing. <laughs> Oh, Roger, this poor, poor boy. if the captain is more comfortable with you as an imp, let's do that, okay? Don't we just need to get through this. Okay. He but, but shifts captain... back from the pug into the imp. Roger can be anything captain wants. Don't make it worse with Look. the pug, because that makes me just want to snuggle. <laughs> That's my pug snoring next to me right now. As much as I'd like to argue about the myth metaphysical appearance of the extension of Pearl's curse for the majority of the evening. I believe there's a Tarrasque in the room that still needs addressing. There is. Hi. Figured of Tarrasque, not literal. We're good. Hi. That too. You never know. <laughs> He looks around. Ask in the room, and both barbarians are Everybody like, "Where?" Gets nervous, Where? All of us <laughs> it's like I'm gonna Everybody's fight like, it. I just, God's just like I can take that form. <laughs> don't a little don't three, do little three it. foot tall Tarask standing on the table. Yes. <laughs> oh God! It's like one of those little claymation Tarasks. Mm -hmm. Pearl's trying to think of every important question to ask. Um. Okay. Um. Let's deal with the uh, Tarask in the room, and then I want to find out where I can send Codger. Again, I'm sure there are many options, but as a first mate, I have a few things I'd like to raise. 
And you can tackle this as you see fit, or you can tackle it not at all. It's up to you all, but... Captain. Since you've been made captain, I believe it's the captain's decision, or at the very least, the captain's prerogative, to at the very least, well, to follow Echo's earlier, earlier reasoning. The democratically propose a goal for the crew. What be your vision for this ship and this crew, Captain? We set things in motion unintentionally on the other part of the island. That disturbs me. This creature that is out for, or not, who knows at this point, for Shara, that set that city into ruin and has been teasing us about its whereabouts and what its plans are next. Not only that, but we discovered that it has siblings that are scattered, and once released, there's going to be chaos here in the Tricord Isles. My goal is to try and stop that because, as far as I can tell, don't know if it's a demon, I don't know if it's a would-be god, not sure. But, until we figure out how to leave the Isles, and it concerns everyone living here. And until I have my own goals and ambitions completed, I kind of still need to be alive for all of that to happen. And may I ask what those would be too, Captain? Or is that private? That is private. As the and captain. if it helps make things a little clearer, hunting down a fucking demon. I know, uh, cliche. A goal we can get behind. Um... Respectfully, Captain, may we add raising the cauldron to the ground? To the list, to the to-do list. I'm sorry, say that first part again? I said, Captain, may we add raising the witch's cauldron to the ground to the list? We could certainly put that on the list. Because I guess at this point, we're just going to add a third one at this point, destroying all the major cities one by one. Well, considering Somehow one of we those... unintentionally keep putting them in motion. Well, considering one of those witches is one of the reasons why that city is to the ground, I'd say raising the cauldron would definitely add bringing peace to the tricord, as you say. I mean, and again, this was... Need... Sorry, go ahead. I'd say we probably need to close whatever portal opened in tide light eventually, since whether it was... I doubt it was you sighing. It was probably either me coming back to life or whatever you guys did with that book that caused that. Burning. Here's the thing. Now we need to figure out is it going to be me? Is it going to be Pearl or Mir? Who's it going to be next time? Because we've got Shara conquering one island as a chosen one. We've got Echo conquering another island as another chosen one. Who's next? I mean, I have I witches the same after thing. I have witches after me and I mean Kenball looks like he's you counting on his. Witches. He's like he's counting on his fingers. He's like, I've got witches after me. I've got Shax who probably wants me dead. Um, Zitrot took a piece of my soul on the way out. That's on my list. Who didn't? Um, Let's what? be honest here. Who didn't? Who didn't what? Take a piece. Take a piece of your soul. soul. Look, Look, Mal, just, Mal just, wasn't just kidding. <laughs> Mal wasn't kidding when he called him a dilapidated timeshare. Yep. <laughs> I, I resent the accusation. I am a timeshare, just not dilapidated. Yes. So I don't know what's going yes. on, but I, whether you guys want to be on board for this or not. But again, I have ambition and goals that I would like to be alive for to see through. And if this is opening up some gates to unlock other siblings to do whatever hell or the heavens are going to start raising upon the aisles kind of feels like it's a business that needs to be tend to considering how we have that information so far well captain if we talk about if we're talking about concrete steps towards making that happen may i make an honest suggestion you're going to anyway what nay if the captain says shut up i listen i'll just spit it out already Aye. Well, as ye may or may not know, Captain, 
Somewhere upon the Tricorn Isles be me dreadnought. Oh, good. Like, Jenka has that very <laughs> obvious look of, God, not this again. <laughs> Somebody shoot this man. <laughs> and if I remember, there be a very, very big gun that be sitting in the scrapyard. All right, and what do we do with this big gun if we have to go in the middle of an island? Mount it on, said ship. Right, Aim uh, higher. Are, are, okay, are, and, so... Are you speaking... And, and crater the damn witch's hole from afar. Are you speaking of the sleeping monster? And what be that one? The one with the siblings? Yeah, like the... Uh, I, I, I'm sorry, Codger was only half listening, but... The, the old, ancient... I mean, that'd be gods. one of the problems we have to deal yeah. with, yes. It, it, it is one of the problems. And I'm, I had the same kind of thought process as, as Jenka. It seems like one by one we're being chosen for shit. So, someone. Or being next. the triggers of nothing else. It, it, yeah. Kodra yeah. can help. Kodra knows the location of temples. Oh, God damn it, Roger, why? Oh, boy. <laughs> Here we go. Well, I mean, we know the locations of two, but they're, well, one of them is inaccessible now. So, big gun, raise the temples. Why do we have to go in them? My question is, how are you loading up this big gun? Are we going to put it on a wagon and haul it through the jungle? Captain, I don't think you understand the range of these massive cannons. They oh. be designed to fire ship at ships out at sea. They're usually coastal defense guns. Okay, I'm talking about you have it on a dreadnought. So we're going to get it off the boat. No, you shoot from the water, Captain. Really? How many miles does it fly? With the right enchantments, actually, Captain, it could even probably fly to other planets, but that's another, no, nor here nor there. I don't know. The DM hasn't told me yet. <laughs> <laughs> TBD, TBD. TBD, uh, stay tuned. Codger, these, these temples, uh, do, do you know how... Do, do you understand, like, miles and distance? Roger knows their locations, their construction. Okay. And those sleeping Are... in it. Okay. Um, tilt ca uh, can involves idea of um, taking a large ship with a large gun. Could he shoot? Are, are the temples close enough to the water that he could shoot into the temple from? He, he, he kind of, he kind of shrugs. Codger doesn't know of the gun. Codger doesn't know artillery. How far uh, be the temple? Can the gun shoot underground if it's an underground temple? This is her asking cannonball. This is her asking cannonball. Because I was going to say, <laughs> you, you could see the, the cog wheels like turning and jamming in Codger's head because he has the math, the math coming up in the face. Uh, cannonball <laughs> cannonball sh shrugs and says, well, if you fire at the ground enough, matey. I mean, Captain. Sure, element of surprise. Captain, but, do, that, <laughs> <sighs> but that being said, I can tell you that much that the Witch's Cauldron is very much above water. At least, as far as I remember it. Unless the DM says otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say, I think we can all agree there's a lot of shit deep in the ocean, underground, in the sky, in the mystery mist that surrounds us all. So, if we want to seek this out on the way, fine. But I'm not dumping every single resource just to hunt down a ship that may or may not exist. Oh, it's exists, here. Captain. In here. You were told it's somewhere. How do you know it's in here? Cannonball looks at Jenka. <laughs> Legit question. <laughs> no, 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 for sure. Cannonball looks at Jenka. And he has this slow, mysterious smile that creeps up on his face. As he kind of opens his pouch, right? And in it, you see two more silver coins that have not yet disappeared. 
And he looks at Jenka and he says, Because if I had to, Vati, I could make it so, but I'd rather not. So everyone's like, wish itchy, and Ash is over here, and she's like, I'm gonna put you with my health potions. <laughs> right? That's because you have problems. <laughs> I mean, look, look at all these I, wishes. Go with my health potions. I, I'm literally yeah, bottle sitting away. I'm not using them. I, I mean, Bill, if you know it's out there somewhere, if you can get just, like, a vague idea of where it might be, if we can get within 25 miles of it, that fancy magical map that we've got attached to the steering wheel will light up the location of that thing. And that tells us oh, the name that's... of every ship or location of every ship within 25 miles of us. So if we can get close enough to about it, that. we'll know exactly where it is. Well, let me put it to you this way, Shara. Actually, you know what? Time for a crew meeting. Cannonball's gonna like. What, what the fuck is this meeting? right now? This wasn't a meeting? <laughs> no, now it's Christmas. Tea and biscuits? <laughs> now it's Christmas. Cannonball grabs his pouch and puts it on the, on the table and opens it. And he pulls out a few things from the pouch, kind of just huddling in front of it and only kind of like showing it to you guys. And obviously, Codrick, because he's probably on the middle of the table still. Um, but he, he kind of looks at each of you and he says, All right, Timothy's. Here's the thing. He pops a, po a potion with a golden liquid inside of it on the table, and he says, This can basically fix a soul and most harm, from what I understood. Puts it back in the, po in, in the pouch. This pistol, mateys, is enchanted to always have a bullet in the chamber. Magical, to that knowledge. Puts it back in the pouch. I read somewhere that there was a rat pirate that may have been famous for one of those. Mm -hmm. Possibly. I don't know. She's a pirate. Just, I'm sure that exists. <laughs> I just know this gun does this. That being said, he pulls out, again, from his tentacles that he's got growing out of his forehead, he shows you guys a little golden leaf, and he says, This is proof that Shax may or may not still be alive. I refuse to use it, but it sits in case of necessity. As his forehead tentacles kind of pull the golden leaf back into his hair. Oh, that's why, why that image? Why? It's yeah. just... I'm sorry. I know it's disturbing. Uh, you look, he's, he's hexed to the, he's hexed to the eyeballs. You no, know, right? I he's, forgot he's, you had tentacles on your head. I know, he's got sickly while. green runes all over his skin too, if that reminds you guys of anything. But anyway. Oh. Um, he, he's basically going to take out each and every one of these weird enchanted relics that he's been sitting on this whole time. The skull of HP swap and so on and so forth. And he says, here's the reality of it all, mateys. We have tools, we have things, but nobody knows what anybody can do. And as such, we are dysfunctional. We are not working as a team yet, which is the second to ask in the room. So if anybody else has anybody they'd like to contribute as to what they're capable of doing, now might be a good time. I, for one, without wasting any of these wishes, am not able to figure out where the Dreadnought is. So if somebody here can, please, by all means, speak up. That goes for oh. you too, creature. Sorry, Codger. Well, Shar did come up with one option that, not gonna lie, may be our best one. 25 miles is a big space, Captain. Just remind me, and I think you just said it, and I may have just had a brain blip, but mm -hmm. it's, we just get notified that there's a ship in any direction, or at least tells us the general direction yeah, from where so, it is. Yeah, um, so if we look at our fancy map thingy um it essentially highlights on a map the location of every ship within 25 miles of us oh so we so we know where they're coming from so we don't get ambushed kind of situation yeah, yeah. Oh, okay i couldn't remember if it actually shows you or you're just alerted okay cool so we're, yeah. we've got sonar. yeah it's like a a live submarine feed. sonar yeah live <laughs> okay. Okay. of the ships within that radius just okay, to say perfect. It, that 20 miles, Captain, 25 nautical miles is not much compared to the vastness of the sea when it comes to the tricorn. Again, that's assuming it's in the tricorn. Right. Cannonball. Which is why or I said on the surface. if we can get a general idea of it is 
of where it is somehow. I don't know how we do that, but if we can, we can pinpoint it using that map. Oh, and and Paul, do you regard the dreadnought as treasure? Matey, it'd be more than just treasure. Pearl's eyes light up. It'd be more Maybe than just treasure. Maybe my compass would work. Oh. And what compass be that? The compass that I've had for so long now, it seems. Probably. The, the one from the seek, the bird. Remember? That spun, spins around when there's treasure? I, you, I think he mentioned that we have never figured out how it worked, at least not in conversation between ye and I. Well, I, again, <laughs> I, I, you know, it's kind of been trial and error. Yeah. Uh, we also have Matcha, who worked for my grandfather, apparently, because she knows locations of treasure. Renowned treasure did, hunter. Did she work? Did she work for him? I don't remember. I thought she was a yes, decent with the I other was to- Mel, 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 no, Matt, somebody. Who told me? He, I, yeah, I don't remember oh, who, who said no, it, but Paul, she did contract work for him. I think oh. Podger said that he knew Matt. Like, I was trying to sort out something between Codger and Matt just so I could leave Codger at the estate, right? Oh, okay. I was like, and, did, did we learn that? <laughs> and then I asked Codger if he, like, I, you know, I was trying to explain Matcha to Codger, and he knew Matcha because he'd seen oh, her okay. at the estate. Oh, okay. Yeah, if I remember correctly, I think she did, like, freelance work. I don't think she was... Yeah, it, yeah, it wasn't, but I like, mean... a, a big oh shit moment or anything, because that's it, right. she's, she's a treasure hunter. Makes yeah, sense she's a treasure hunter, so, I treasure. mean, that's yes. a possibility. Um, okay, yes. I was just trying to remember out of character. I was like, wait, we learned that. <laughs> okay, perfect. Carry on. Cannonball here, by the way, is gonna turn to Jenka, and he'll add, and by the way, Captain, should we find it, it'd be me honor to have ye captain the ship making that clear right away. Not to underman, undermine your command. She, she's actually legit wide-eyed right now, and she's like, your precious dreadnought that you would not, will not stop talking about. You want me to captain. He's gonna give her a little bit of a smirk, and he said, he'll say, did I stutter, captain? Now don't me, make me regret me choices, yes? thinking in her head she's like at this point do i even want to from how often you talk about <laughs> just from sheer annoyance she's like i will consider it thank you i that being I... said i'd love to try the compass but oh please, please pearl go ahead oh i was just kind of thinking codger what would be the biggest flying thing that you can turn into He's like thinking, he's like, and he just melts down and turns into like a very pink parrot. That's it? Codger hasn't seen many birds. I'm not pearl. Size doesn't matter. Well, actually, I was thinking something bigger, like uh, an albatross or something that was a seagoing bird. Codger doesn't know what albatross is. Roger somebody somebody like get the ocean. This. Ocean scares um, Codger. Well, I I that that's unfortunate, Codger. Um, I'm trying to think of something that you might be able to turn into that you could fly to land. Okay. But why? Because. Theoretically, remember, you're not supposed to be on the ship, right? Roger's but, already on ship. Co you, uh, yeah, Roger sort of yeah. broke that rule. Yeah, yeah, we did. Um, okay, we, we need to move past this for a moment. Uh, what else do I have? I have the compass. Um, oh, and, and Ashara, you lent... Well, actually, you snatched back my spiral notebook from... Um, cannonball when we were trying to negotiate about my grandfather and that didn't go did well. I did I do that is that I a thing that you, I did 
Yes, uh, you, sure. you, you did. Uh, I think you did, yeah. Uh, then I totally you... have that, yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, may, may I have that back? Absolutely, I've been holding it on to, to holding on to it for you this whole time. So. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, I do have this notebook, um, which, you know, if we put someone's name in it, there's a contract out on a death contract out on them. I, I, I don't know if it extends to Hags, and I do not know what kind of horrible repercussions it has when you do this, but I have. I feel like, I feel like powerful beings like demons, devils, and even hags might find a way out of it or might not even be affected. Or the price to get them... <laughs> Sorry, Captain, go ahead. They are also probably protected by specific magics against it, I'm sure, but... We well, that yet. since we're putting our cards on the table, as it were, that's what I have. You here, Shara. Anything you'd like to add? Um... I feel like you know about the things I have, but I have the, the the nifty helm that allows me to smash into things and points down and the boots. The boots make me run faster. Really fast. Oh, yeah. Run, buddy, run. Like a run, yes. run on water fast, yeah. Yep. Yeah, and I mean, I've got my axe. Um, I've got these bracers here, which have been slowly building up a charge because I have not gone a day without getting punched by somebody. So they've got a pretty decent charge in them right now. But oh shit! Actually, hold on. Oh, this could be good or real bad. Um, Char's gonna run over to the, the the door to the the cabin here and swing it open and whistle for her duffel crab friend to come to her and he comes just charging up from the the steps below because now remember he's the size of a large like a like a large dog he just oh, comes like barreling to towards you uh, and he's still wearing the side glasses oh yeah stand, he's, stand he's got aside. he's got the kanye uh the shutter shades on and everything i i stand aside so you can come barreling into the room then i shut the door Okay, I can't believe I didn't think about this sooner. And it, it, th there may be nothing here, but holy shit. Okay, so when we, actually no, first, Pearl, I'm sorry. Uh, second, holy shit. So when we got to the mansion, my first thought was this, this guy, he's a bit of an asshole. He just punched me across the city. So I'm going to get what's mine. And I, I let my crab friend here loose in the mansion to just, you know, pick and choose the, the best things that it could find. Bit of a payday for me, right? But now we find out, fuck, that place was full of magical items and shit. Maybe the crab grabbed some magical shit. I looted your grandpa is what I'm saying. <laughs> you know what? Shara, in I, I robbed your house is what I'm saying. the most genius move I've ever heard when it comes I mean. to plundering. Oh. Works out for us now, I guess. I mean, it, it may come to you nothing. might have maybe, his stuff. Maybe he just grabbed like a bunch of silverware or something, but I never checked to see what he grabbed. It might be or a good time to do so. Maybe he grabbed something that might be a childhood memento, but that's for another time. It, it could could be that too, yeah. Well, Shara, how about you tell your boy here to, well, I don't want to say dump it, but see what the heck he got out of the mansion. Yeah, um, so hey, buddy. Oh, um, I have an idea. Codger, do you know the name of any specific magical item that my grandfather had stashed? I, I don't, I just know he had some. Do you know what he referred to the whole horde as? No. Oh, Codger, Codger, Codger. Well, Codger. Let, let's just do it this way. Hey. Uh, buddy, everything that we took out of that mansion, sh show it to us. A piece at a time. Yeah, Just please like, don't blow up you the know, room. <laughs> go in there, pull something out, set it Everyone down. Everyone out of my quarters while we do go this. Go in there, roll out another <laughs> I ain't thing. dealing with this shit. <laughs> See, he, walks into, he walks into the bag, 
and first he pulls out like a giant like bust of Pearl's grandpa. Oh, there's a memento for you. No, yep. thank you. No. And, and he grabs it, and just pulls it back into the bag, comes back out, and he pull, he just brings out like a an entire bedding set with him. Looks like he just grabbed like a bunch of sheets and pillows and stuff off of a bed and just pulled it into the bag. He must be thinking of nesting. Ash would be proud. Pushes. Are them. they silk? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. To ask. Are they? <laughs> You know what? Let me roll for it. Yes, they are silk. Oh my god! As he just pushes them the back into the bag, its bounty. and every now and then he just he keeps pulling out just random, like every now it's like a flower vase and then a painting, there's a doorknob. But as he goes on and on and on, he starts pulling out like. A, like a collection of marbles that are inside a glass display case, including the display case. I was about to say, including the, the display thing. case, he just took the whole entire thing. Oh, I mean, that's that's a way to bypass any trap or anything. But Jesus Christ! I mean, those, those look nice. You could probably sell those for a decent amount. Do these but... marbles look like anything I've ever seen before? They don't. This is like even the make of this case isn't like anything else that was previously brought out. This case is well taken care of. There isn't a speck of dust on it. The glass is clear. It looks pristine. You know, it probably would have been useful from the very start of this. Can anyone detect magic? Fucking Christ. <laughs> Looking simply at our druid. Here's the thing. Uh, one moment. Um, we only have one person that is probably capable of doing that. So that's I not do our believe it's a ritual time. spell and as well. And guess who didn't memorize that spell today? Isn't it a ritual? Uh, is it, it magic? Is. Yeah. 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 It's it's if it's a ritual, you can do it at any point. Yeah. I also oh. have detect magic. Oh well, there you go. So, so are you I command? Are you? Are you going to command this poor crab to go back in and pull everything out again one by one? We'll just start with the marbles. Okay. Yeah. There is magic coming off of this, off of these marbles inside the display case. Is there yeah. magic coming off of the display case? Yes. Ah. Mm. We have Good thing it grabbed before. the display case. Oh, I don't feel like the marbles have popped up somewhere in a different campaign before. <laughs> Always dangerous when marbles make an appearance. Yeah. Um, I, I yeah. Get, I get, uh, so what? What's? What school of magic are we feeling off of the display case? Yes. Ah, uh, <laughs> yes. The the the, the oh fu. I won't tell you. DM answer. I love no, it. I'm trying to think uh, of no, what it multiple. would be. Yeah. I think oh, evocation. I it says it like all of them. <laughs> it's evocation. Uh, oh my. Oh, Muir, oh my. Okay. When you were being chased by those robotic things that my grandfather had sent out. The ones I smashed, yes. Those. Were they something that something was thrown and then they appeared? Oh, they smashed well, though. No, no. But how did they, how were they deployed? Magic. I think there was a ring. Oh. Was there a ring? I think so. You know what? This is given. Hold on, hold on. I don't even know what you're talking about. The thing there was mechanical the things that I fun hopped and smashed in an alleyway. Yeah, that was trying to kidnap. Well, um, I had pearl in my pocket and was hightailing it the hell out of there. Yeah. That teleported us into... Yeah, he pretty much game. threw them out like little balls and they morphed into like the little bots. That's what I thought. So, just to let you all know, there's evocation magic on this chest. Do not touch. For those of you who don't know, evocation magic can be quite explosive. And I'd rather not have a hole in the middle of the ship. 
Would I be able to do an Arcana check to figure out what the hell this is? As far as the, again, the box. It's going to take you an hour. So we're not doing that right now. Got it. I'll probably need some time alone with this before we can unless figure it you, out. Unless somebody has identify it, it, like it's going to take you an hour to identify the properties. Got it. I actually am proficient in Arcana. But it's, it's, yeah, it's a time. It's thing. still it's an hour. Still, it's still, it's still okay. a time because thing. You don't and have it's off of intelligence. Well. Isn't that interesting? Let, let's, um, let's finish going through everything that was nicked from the mansion. In case yes, any, the... any other magical stuff. Aye, the or, box is definitely or, magic, though. And we'll just set the magical stuff off to the side. So, you know, nothing weird happens. And then you smart people can look at that stuff later. Good idea. So are you, are you having the crab leave the, uh, the case out? Yeah, I'll, I'll ask him to kind of set everything that we deem magical just off to the side in the, the cabin here. If he's willing, I mean, I don't have control over this guy. He's just a little friend, so he might decide, no, this is pretty. I want to keep this. Well, he leaves the case out and he goes back in. And then he pulls out the strange looking box. Wood in make various cuts in the wood itself, making it look as if various portions of the box can be moved around. Ooh, be this puzzle a puzzle box, box of sorts. <laughs> All right, Cannonball having the same one brain cell for a minute. No. Nope. <laughs> uh, once again, is this something Pearl remembers from her? Nope. It, it almost kind of reminds me of the, the ritual cube thingy that I've got, but it's like different material and stuff. And those of you who have detect magic up, you are detecting conjuration magic in the center of this box. This thing summons things. Careful. Are you mansplaining all this to us? Are you are you mage splaining all this to us? I, I, I'm I'm literally verbally. <laughs> saying oh my god! Identify is have... just mage splaining. Yep. God, yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> detect magic is mage splaining. Yep. That's the thing. Okay. I mean, he's explaining it for it. those of us like, that don't know. Can't sense this is evocation. It, yeah. For those of you who don't know, evocation is. It's just funny because in my head, I'm like, he's mage explaining. <laughs> but here's the yeah, reality. See, but, you people see, here I don't thought do he magic. was like going Dora the Explorer wise. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> I mean, funny. there's two barbarians standing here. Don't ever assume we have a clue. Same, yes, you know. yeah, <laughs> Never assume I know magic. Even though I'm sitting here with like a 14 wisdom, like, I mean, well, let's not assume. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Cannonball has, has less intelligence than you do. The only reason he actually manages to do anything is because of exceptional witch cantrip. Otherwise, I'd be absolutely useless. I might have uh, lost a few brain cells when Zatrot decided to violently evacuate my, my body. And afterwards, he goes in and he pulls out what looks like a saxophone. <laughs> Are we sensing anything off the saxophone? More evocation. Okay. I was going to say sexual tension, but yes. I mean... <laughs> da, 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 da. Okay, I'm not going to go there. Okay. Uh, so we said the box with... That, uh, the box, the display case with the... Uh, And then he walks in and he pulls out a small stone. Give me one moment. I need to check what I uh, put for this.
The stone is cut in a weird, almost like rhombus shape. Very bright pink. Like almost offensively pink to your eyes. Gives off there's that there's a ma there's a magic to it, but it doesn't necessarily necessarily tell you which school it's from. Careful, mateys. This might be the most dangerous out of all of them. I can't quite tell what it is. It definitely magic though. It matches my hair color. <laughs> Just calls dibs on it. Wait, you have hair? <laughs> a little bit, right on top. Oh. Never saw it. I'm not that tall. Pardon me. I, I am quite tall, so I, I get <laughs> it. Tall, but not that tall. <laughs> then it reaches in it, and like, you just see it pull out this large, very beautifully crafted stone casket. Oh, that's a bit grim. Made, uh, like, the stone itself is just this solid obsidian with, like, golden inlays. And the symbol of a three-headed crow on the top. Uh-oh. Oh, shit, guys. That's probably not good. Where have I seen this before? The, the, the thing, the pigma, her staff had that on it. No, was it her staff? Yeah, her staff her had staff. that on it. That, this, that crow no. thing. This, this, um, coffin is giving off transmutation men. Do not touch this. Remember what I said, do not touch it? This is one of those, do not touch it. Should should that go back in the bag? Yeah, for yes. now, definitely. We'll take a look at it later. Please, yes. And the crab, crab just shoves it back into the bag. Thank you. Leave it in the other dimension for now. <laughs> yeah. And it pulls out a small dog whistle. <laughs> Let me guess. Conjuration magic. Conjuration magic. This fucking thing summons Beauregard. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of like looks at all of you if it should push it back. That that one I think you can just put on the, the pile there to be examined later. All right. Uh, that stone, by the way, Rosen, with the unknown magic, like, can you describe it a little bit more for me, if you don't mind? It's about a fist-sized stone that's been cut into, like, a rhomboid-like shape. Very and... bright pink, very, cool, like, very cool to the touch. Very light as well. And unknown magic, interesting. Okay. I'm back in the bag for the... Sorry, I'm taking notes right now. I know me taking notes, but... <laughs> Give me a minute. Okay, back in the bag? Okay, good. Um, if we put it back in the bag, um, are, are, do we have enough information to be able to get it back specifically without getting random stuff, too? Yeah, you could just tell like, them to, break, to, like, pull that item out. Oh, Okay. I mean, the casket is what we put back, right? All the other items are out for now? Yeah, yeah, the casket mm -hmm. went back in the bag, and okay. the other five items are yep. in a pile off to the side. And then yep. it pulls out a pair of these long cylindrical tubes, almost looking like they would be hilts to something. Hilts? But there's nothing yep. attached to them. Are they hollow or are they, are they, are they they're like... hollow like you could see that there should be something that's connected inside of it is there any role i could do to see if i recognize what those items are uh you would have to spend that hour to identify them okay do i feel any magic off of them 
you don't necessarily feel magic, yet you feel the potential for magic. Ah, uh, so something that has yet to be crafted. That could be very valuable. Careful with it, mateys. The two hilt-looking tubes, potential for magic. Okay. When I look at all of these things, um, although I didn't spend much time in the sort of the uh, metalwork section of anything, do I have a sense of what the value of all of these things would be? Not without not without spending time looking over them, like making like full-on appraisal checks for each of these. Okay. But everything that they've brought out seems to be very well crafted, very meticulous, and definitely not done by the hands of anybody. Because none of it bears the sigil of the gold spar metal, which you know your grandfather was very adamant about anything from the metalworks had to have that brand front and center okay and then a one final item is brought out a singular what looks to be gauntlet Holy metal goes over the entirety of your fist and forearm. What size? Right now, it looks to be fine for a medium-sized person. So not gnome-sized. Gnome. Like not grandfather-sized. Technically, a gnome. Gnomes are are gnomes small or medium? Small. Okay. Small, yeah. Small. So not not small. necessarily for a small individual. Although magic item could shape to it, but yep. we'll cross that mm-hmm. when we get to it. <laughs> what, yeah. what does it look like? It just like this strange, like metallic looking gauntlet. Almost as if like it, there's been a finish put over it and there it was just waiting for a paint job, but no paint has been applied. Okay, and it's it's there's no stones encrusted in it or anything. It's not like Thanos' infinity gauntlet or anything. Funny like that. that you should say that. Along each of the knuckles on the hand are sockets <laughs> that look to be a gem. <laughs> we found the infinity guns with mateys. We can snap them out of existence. Wait, wait, wait. How many temples did we need to find? And then inside the center, like the back of the hand, is another socket for a gem. But on the other hand, like on the other side, you see there's a small, like, port as well I swear if this is how we get the dreadnought to fly (laughs) Hmm. aye captain how many temples did you say when you were talking about it earlier I need to double check but I could have sworn it was five because I remember it made like there's kind three. Of corner than center. Was it three? Oh, three? Yeah, if we're Wait, talking about I'm the, checking. the siblings, there was. Because I'm trying to look for my notes for right now, and I just can't yeah, find my. There, there notes are, on. there are three temples. One three. for each of the, um, one I, for each of the siblings, and then the one that's in the center. Yeah, I, see, I remember the center one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there's four technically, but yes. I'm sure the hags have one too. That would make five. Well, we don't know that. Nay. But the horse's In mouth this... said three. But clearly this sockets things. Gems of some kind. Quick, put the marbles in it. Just kidding. <laughs> Pause. How many marbles are in the, are in the jar, in the glass jar? There There's are six. six. <clears throat> and there are six <clears throat> sockets on that gauntlet. Oh shit. Uh oh. I unwittingly made a connection. <laughs> right. Uh, 
Are the holes marble sized? <laughs> Probably fit them in there. Yeah, this is all going Do to it bear. and snap. See what happens. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this, bears, this bears at least a little bit of investigation. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to leave that to you guys. Pearl looks at all of this and she shakes her head and she says, you know, all of this, all of these things, all of this magic, and yet my grandfather could not save himself. Nothing saves anyone from Mal. Given time, all masters end up a meal. Deadly. The problem with making a deal for your soul, Pearl, is that you voluntarily surrender part of it. Except, Cannonball, I didn't make a deal. Nobody made this deal. I inherited this. Only and deal somebody made... in your lineage made the deal. Sorry, go ahead. The only deal 17 made... 17 masters ago! The only deal made was made by original master. Who was the original master? Pearl's great, 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 you know, <laughs> grandfather. Well, one thing I will need to do is take a look at these and see if any of them are any use into achieving our goals. And that's going to probably occupy a few hours of me time. Well, Captain, in the meantime, we'll every uh, to be fair, everyone here can do it. This mm -hmm. all it takes is one hour. Yeah, that's true. You don't have to even make Arcana rolls. It's just you sitting there and investigating is it, it. Is it per item? Or? Per item. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's per item. But how about but... you split up the task? There, there's there's seven items. So how about we each take one and then. I don't know, maybe Macha can help with the last one. I mean, she's a treasure hunter, right? Surely she knows how to figure out magic stuff. Oh, um... I just use this. It pulls out, like, this little, like, artist ocular. What does that do? It tells me if something's magic and what it does. Can she use that for us on these things? I could. Do you want me to? It'd be most helpful. Please, yes. Help, help in any way you can, Codger. Be as helpful as possible. I, I'm, I'm matcha. This is matcha. Matcha. Oh, I'm, oh, matcha. matcha. I'm sorry. I was thinking, what else didn't Codger tell me? <laughs> <laughs> just... Oh, sorry. Problem is, you didn't ask Codger the right question. And she, pu she puts in the ocular. Oh, don't I know it? It's like, okay, which one am I looking at first? Start with the marbles. Go in order that they came out of. Okay, marbles. He crawls up onto the case. Looks in. Hmm. Well, they seem to all be concentrated forms of magic. Like batteries of sort. Yeah, batteries. Oh, no, they're expensive. incomplete. Wild. To be using them alone would be catastrophic. Let me ask you this. Do you think this gauntlet was designed to harness them? She turns and she looks at the gauntlet and, like, adjusts the, uh, little dials on the ocular and goes, You got it. And what about the case that these marbles be in? I sensed magic off of that, too. Oh, it's, um, containing the power of the, uh, gems so they don't, you know, just start destroying everything around them. So how do you suggest we transfer the stones to the gauntlet without destroying everything around us? With your hands? Yeah, that sounds safe, Harry. I'm in. <laughs> 
Shoot. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Cannonball, so do you have Mage Hand? That's two. What I, else do you need? Many of them, actually. Um. How many times can you use this little trinket of yours before it dies off or runs out of juice? Sir, this is a masterwork item. It ain't running out of juice anytime soon. Hey, just checking. Don't want to be ruining any of your fancy gizmos. The uh, pu puzzle box next? Yeah, let's go puzzle box next. Hmm. No, the puzzle box itself isn't magic. That's just wood. So... Something is sleeping inside. Sleeping. Sleeping. Why? I don't know. Why do you sleep in a bed? Is it comfortable? Maybe they find this comfortable. Can't tell you what it is, though. More like in a condensed magical form right now. You could open it. Maybe not on the ship. Actually, you know what? This falls upon the purview of the captain. Captain, your opinion. Yeah, we're not releasing anything right now. We're, we're, we're not doing anything. You heard the captain. How about this fancy gizmo instrument thingy? Oh, that's... That's interesting. Um, it's a weapon. More importantly, it's a gun. Well then, if you'll all excuse me. <laughs> God damn it, Rojan. What are you doing to me now? Does it... Well, depending on the pitch and tone and everything then if you know how to play a saxophone i guess you can shoot magical ammunition out of it it's a sax of magic missiles as you see as she points out these like little what almost look to be cylindrical indentations along the uh the horn part of the saxophone they would just all come out here That's definitely something I'll have to experiment with later. Do you play saxophone? Amongst I maybe talents? you'd be surprised what I can play. When he says that, by the way, you'll see like two mage hands appear behind him. Four hands is quite useful. A damn it. Not to mention. I'm quite adept at the social things of life. Anyone seen Trigun, you know exactly where I got this yep. idea from. Oh, yeah. No, oh, 100%. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Trigun was amazing. <laughs> I don't care what anyone says. One of the coolest villains in that Whoa. series. Oh, my God, yes. Mr. Hornfreak, uh, we loved it. And she's yep. Mm -hmm. Jumps down. And she's like, "You want these uh, tube things looked at?" Aye, please. Hmm. Oh, okay. Give me a second. She jumps up, starts rummaging through her pack. You see that she grabs something in her hand and she just opens up the side of the thing and shoves something in and closes it. And as she pushes it, a beam of light extends out from the um the uh tube itself. As it just starts crackling with like this electrical energy. Are you telling me you gave us lightsabers, bro? Yes, these are lightsabers. <laughs> yes. Literally actual lightsabers. She lets go and she opens up the compartment. She pulls out the sapphire. 
Huh. Seems to be concentrated magical essence. Dependent on the gem that you put inside. So you're telling me if I put a ruby inside, it'd be fire coming out of this thing? One would suppose. Very well. She just pockets the sapphire and closes the uh, side compartment of the hilt and lays him back down. So what about this stone and the whistle? Oh, um... The whistle summons a dog. It's a dog whistle. I mean, anyone can tell you that. And that's an island stone. What now? Oh, shit. What that feeling? Um, yeah, I had a feeling too. It's a magic stone. Some of them do cool things. Um, this one will make you a little bit hardier. As this is a... Ion Stone of Fortitude, oh, which damn. will raise your constitution score by two up to a maximum of 20. Well then. <laughs> Thinking all barbarians need that. Let's be real. Max. Now that we know how all this works. Captain. Well, you do, uh, you also do have that um, get the co coffin. coffin thing. Should we have her take a look at that? Actually, yeah, it might be a good idea to know what it is. Did you just pull out, like, a quarter also, of the coffin? I was also thinking that if um, they're excavating the old site, this might be what they were looking for. Which is why I want it out of this dimension as much as possible. Yeah, we uh, maybe yeah. pull it out, examine it real quick, then stuff it back in there. Y yeah. Alright, let's do I that. But this. why, how would the crab find it? And they couldn't find it. Because the crab stole it. No, no, but I mean, they were excavating prior to our going there, No, they didn't. Right? No, they no, weren't. they weren't. They're well, going they to weren't. excavate now at the portals. Oh, open. they were going to excavate now. I'm yeah, sorry, I'm sorry. They're going to, basically. So, I, I, I guess I was thinking that there had been a lot of digging in the basement. Hmm. Which there had been. They, uh... The crab pulls the, the coffin out again. She looks at it. Well, it's not as doom and gloom as some of you thought. Um, this here will reanimate and reincarnate dead things. Oh my god, it's the goo. It's the goo. It's not the goo. The goo you rebuilt you. you. This are is you, reincarnation. Are, are you telling me you found us like a, a, a coffin of respawn? I think we come back as something else, yep. but... Yes, yes, exactly. Well, maybe not something to abuse or use unless we absolutely need it, yes. No, there is yeah. someone or something inside of it. right now. What? Mm -hmm. Why? There's someone Ooh. in it. Should we get them out? No. The captain said nothing on the ship opened on the ship right now. Yeah, no, let's not do that right now. Yeah. Uh, e even I'm like, maybe let's hold off on that. When we get to, to land, maybe we can open the coffin and open the cube. But right now seems like possibly not a good idea. I'd rather not have the ship be sunk by some eldritch monstrosity that simply wanted to manifest into existence. So I say, I mean, if we do it on the ship before we hit landfall, at least it's contained to here and not going to destroy another city. I'd rather a city than the ship. Wait, what? <laughs> uh, Matcha, do, do, do you know, can this coffin be used more than once? I would assume so, but I don't think you'd have to let whoever is inside out first. Yeah, yeah. Um. Can you tell how old it is? Well, 
I can only tell if it's magic or not. Okay. That being said, considering the pile of bounty before us, Captain. Yes. Right of the first pick goes to ye. Unless anyone objects, of course. I mean, to be completely honest, I, I need to see that list. And, uh, yep. You want me to post okay. it? I have it written up. Uh, sure, if you don't mind. <laughs> yep. I'm going to just um, drop that in the chat. The only thing I think that would be useful... I mean, anyone can use the Ion Stone, so I don't have anything to do with that. Um, how, how long are the lightsabers? When they're activated. When Macha used it, it looked to be about long sword blade. Ah, damn. Okay. I was gonna say dual lightsabers as daggers. <laughs> um. You don't know if like they'll the, they'll modify. She just she just did a quick uh thing for it. That is true. You no, know, just out of curiosity, she'll she'll hold on to it and activate it and see what what it looks like. Are you putting a gem inside of it? Ah, yeah, I see here. Oh, I do have a couple of gems, but I don't know what they are. It just as gemstones. So I will find a gemstone. Again, it just says gemstone, so I don't know what color they are. Uh, and just I'll put one in there. How many gemstones do you have? Four. Okay. For that, I'll say that you have a emerald, a sapphire, a pearl, and a ruby. As, as Pearl is watching all of this going on, she's going to say, Cannonball, I have a question for you. All right, Métis, what can I do for you? Well, I'm just wondering, you know, laws of the sea, laws of piracy. Of course, we're not pirates. Not um, yet, we aren't. Oh, what? Laws mm -hmm. of ownership, laws of possession, laws of looting. Theoretically, all of this came from my grandfather's mansion, and I inherited the mansion, right? Nay, Mitty, the laws of looting come from way before your grandfather, sorry. So I have no rights to any of this, then? Nay, Mitty, this be from your house, yes. Why, is there something that caught your eye? I can go second, I could go third, or even last, I don't mind. What would ye like, oh. Pearl? Oh. I would like to barter a little bit. Since we're all going to share in the bounty, is there any chance I mean, technically that... it's a crab. He looted it, but yes. Well, okay, but is <laughs> but there yes. any chance that perhaps I might be able to barter my share for permission to keep Codger on board until we hit landfall? He's gonna look at, you know, Jenka here as this is the captain's decision. And and Pearl's looking at the captain who's playing with the lightsaber. <laughs> and as you put the emerald in... I'm just in, swinging around going like, zero, 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 zero. <laughs> as you put the the emerald, trying to write my name. <laughs> as you put the emerald in and you ignite it, you do see that there's a... almost like a dial on the side of the hilt that allows you to adjust the length of the blade. Going oh, from yeah. dagger to the short sword to long sword. I just realized. God, I could have dual wielding short blade. You could have dual hurt. wielding exploding lightsabers. Oh Anywho, um, yeah, so Pearl oh. had. Yeah. Or perhaps Pearl might just 
jump in here and ask for first pick. I'm really looking at those tube things. And as you say that, Pearl, you feel like a surge oh. of something inside of you as you start to try to twist in game things to get a more advantageous way in this whole situation. Do I feel it? You don't. Is this a good twist or a bad twist? It depends on it depends on how what Pearl's view of greed is. Okay, in this situation, uh, out of character. Okay, what Pearl is trying to do is. Pearl basically is doing, she's going back to what she said earlier about she's acting from a place of compassion. She just really, for some reason, she wants to keep Codger safe. It's it's her whole druid protect little, little things that don't seem to be, I don't know, that are in her care or something. So that's kind of where she's coming from is she's just trying to sort out what to do because she is totally at a loss as to where she can send Codger at this point given where they are she she just cannot think of something she can deploy him to do so that's where her mindset is when mm -hmm. she's doing this and and she sees she sees the captain's interest in the lightsabers as possibly a bargaining point yeah. You can't copyright lightsabers or light sticks. <laughs> okay, and light like sticks. with that, <laughs> like as you're doing that, you're feeling light like lights. You're feeling something building inside of you. A little mixture of greed, a little mixture of a bit of a business power. as you begin to feel that sp the spark sort of like well up inside of you. Oh boy, here we go. And at this time, I need you to give me a percentile. Yeah, I knew that was coming. Oh shit, here we go. I've got to re-roll the, the smaller one. Okay, there we are. They both came out now. Uh, that would be a 97. Nice. Oh, I don't know if it's nice or not nice. I mean, <laughs> could be sticking, you know, one foot over the edge here. So as the spark wells up inside of you and you see Jenka's interest in these gem swords, you know this is a perfect bargaining chip. But there's something better. That you can use Codger. While the treasure itself would be great, a, a great bargaining bargaining chip to maybe have people see the way that you're trying to think about Codger. There is a specific threat on board that if you were to use him for, it would be guaranteed to keep everyone safe, and there would be no logical reason to send something 
send a guaranteed safe haven for the ship away. And that is with Echo's disease. If it's fed into co- if it's fed into con- Codger on a daily basis, if Codger stays on the ship and travels with the group, there's no risk to anyone here that they would catch the disease. For the time being, until Echo is freed or cured of this curse, Codger is your safe haven. I had a feeling we were going to go there eventually. He did say he's immune to most diseases. Yeah. Um, out of character, the reason I didn't go kind of wasn't thinking that route was I just assumed there were rats and things that we could infect. Rats infect people. Rats infect people. Rats infect the rat. Kill the rat. There's options, but I was waiting until I used it on Codger to bring up the whole wall. Codger is a uh, outlet for this. Yeah, but... Mm-hmm. Okay. Poor Codger. We're gonna torture him. Codger offered. Well, I know. Yeah. Um. You know, I mean, how many people would ask an imp permission? I mean, seriously. You know, like, like Pearl's just... Echo would. Pearl's just a tree hugger. What can I say? Echo values freedom that much that she would ask the imp. He has his own free will. Kind of. And so as you're making, as you're, as you're speaking, you're, you go to speak about these, these terms of your share of the treasure. The spark sort of points you in the direction that would definitely get a yes okay but we can't test that yet so um but captain so i'll just continue but captain as a show of my goodwill and the fact that i harbor you no ill and that everything that i would really like to forget some of the things that have gone before with the letters and that if you took it in a negative way that was not our intention as Shara has already said I would be delighted to let you have those light sticks for him to stay pardon? I'm sorry I I, I couldn't hear that for Codger to stay no no just I'm rethinking this, really. I think it's more important to have your goodwill and your realization that we do value you as captain, and I really want you. I really would like us to make a a bit of a fresh start, and maybe this is the spot to do it. Well, I can't use them anyway. Could be a start, I'll think on it. Why can't you use them, Captain? Or perhaps it's not my place to ask. I cannot imbue my power in these. Can't you? No, they have to be through my psychic blades. Sounds like you just need to find a psychic gem. I mean... In- invisible exploding <laughs> lightsabers. I like it. Oh, God. Is this I pointing the right direction? Ready. Stab. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> to be completely honest, I don't even know what Jenka could use from this so she's actually just gonna kind of step back and just kind of let you guys decide. She, I, I honestly don't know what she would use, to be honest. Rogan, if hmm. we had put Zitrot's orb inside of one of these, what would have no. happened? No. <laughs> Zitrot's no. orb wouldn't have fit. <laughs> oh, it's too big, right? Oh, 
I'm assuming that with most of these items made of metal with pearl as a druid, there's very little there that's anything that would be of use to her. And at this point, I'm not sure she wants a dog. <laughs> I mean, and the crab could just keep them in his bag for now. Well, I'm there's that. But scared. Scared. Anyway, that I... we don't have to decide right now. That's true. Scared that I know who that dog is. And that doesn't oh, bode well for me. <laughs> I don't know. You cannot be a coward and blow the whistle. Yeah. I'll, I'll wait till we get to land. Then I'll blow the whistle and open the cube and, and open, open the, the coffin. Box. There we go. We open everything on land. <laughs> Let the cities deal with the fallout and get back to the ship. And then you summon just a candy. You, you, you summon just a Tarask sized Beauregard. I mean, look. Pop back on the ship and get the hell out of there. Yep, that's something else's problem now. Nope. There goes the next town. You know what? While we're there, we might as well read also from the dragon summoning book and see what we can get out of that, too. Why not? Summon the gods and let them fight it out. Right? And pray the winner's not the trot. But yes. Um, all right, well, if the captain's abstaining, tell you what, we'll do it your way. How about this? Echo, I did offer you. I did owe you an apology for how I handled things. What would ye have? I mean, I'm not sure. How about a gauntlet that punches things magically? Yeah. How do we get the marbles out, though? I got this. Probably going to do it on land, though. For the same reason, but I don't want to bl risk blowing up the ship. So how about this? Let's leave the gauntlet and marbles in the bag for now when we get to land and we can ensure that we can use this thing. No, I'm pretty it. sure we can use it, actually. Right, Rojan. Mm -hmm. Would I be able to summon my mage hands inside the box? Inside the box? The like, without phase. opening the box at all? Mm. No, you. they would need to be summoned, like, the box would need to be opened and the mage hands would need to go, be able to go in through there. Okay. Even though I can see inside of it. Alright. Mm -hmm. Um. Hmm. Container here. Well. Let's see. Sharon. Anything yeah. you have your eyes on. After all, Ye Crab is what got us this week. Shara, open out. the box. <laughs> yeah. What's I, in thought, the box? I thought you were about to ask her to touch something and she would have been too stupid to say no. No, 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 no. Cannonball has played with too many cursed mar magic artifacts to do anything stupid on the ship. I'll do something stupid off the ship, not on the ship. Why is there a hole taking on water in the bottom of the ship? Hmm. Don't worry about that's, it. That's normal, don't worry. Right? It's a feature. It's a speed hole. <laughs> it's only... Look, I don't see it as a problem. To the ones that can't swim or, you know, breathe underwater, that's their problem. True. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, it, admittedly, I don't, I don't really understand most of this stuff. Um, I do understand, though, that as far as, like, magic shit goes, you can only be, like, connected or whatever to three things at once. And I'm already connected to three things, so I'd have to give something up. But, I mean, that stone matches my hair, so that's pretty cool. Mm. Mew ear. Mew ear. Mew ear. I can't. I'm sorry. Meaty. It's mirror. When you're drunk and you want someone to come over, mirror. Mirror. Got it. That works. All right, mirror. Mm. Anything that catches your eye. Oh, God, why do you have to ask me these things? Um, let me look. Uh, 
Weapons are the only thing that I really can make use of. Um, Can't make use of a dog? I have a history with dogs. <laughs> honey, honey, so is Fox. <laughs> and Soviets, Tricord. Rabbit chase you. <laughs> <laughs> Is no one gonna take the poor dog? I mean, I would take the dog if I knew what kind of dog it was. Look, here's the thing. I want the, the Jack is gonna be a fucking hypocrite if she takes the whistle, uses it, and it's a fucking hellhound. So it's like, oh, I guess I have to taking. keep it. <laughs> Out of character, fucking cool. Yeah, yeah but at the same time, if one less summons dog, it's a hellhound. Is Nikki gonna make us get rid of it? Maybe. Are you going to say no to a dog? I, I want to know what that's... kind of dog it is before I'm that's like, true. give it to me. Oh, the... so you want you want the specifics of the dog? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What kind of dog are we summoning? So, I mean, if we do Macho like a looks it over. <laughs> looks like... A shadow mastiff. Oh. Oh. You son of a bitch! I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Now we all want the whistle. Right. Fight to the death. No. No, no, Char can have it. <laughs> is dog, is the dog an attuned item? The dog is not an attuned item. The dog is a pet. Is, Sh is Shara gonna just turn into like our pet master that has all the summons? I, I would happily take the dog. <laughs> I wouldn't have to give up any of my current items if I took the dog. Sounds like a plan. Anybody else have a problem with that? Mm -mm. Negative. So, nope. As, as everybody say, says no, I pick up the whistle and I hold it up and then I stop and I look at Jenka. <laughs> Can I? She learns. <laughs> Jenka looks nervous. Uh, I honestly don't know. Should I maybe do it on the deck of the ship instead of in here? Yes, scare the crew. Scare the crew! And the refugees. You still see, like, the nervousness, but you notice it's not because of the whole, like, oh, don't summon anything on the ship, it may be something else. She's like... Yeah, maybe the deck. I immediately go outside and blow the whistle. All right, and as you do, as... Jenka, you still have that yep. reaction. <laughs> Jenka uh, is like, everyone inside sees Jenka just fall to her knees, puts her hands over her ears, and just screams in pain. Um, Order of the so... Lichen, you got the yep, dog bitch. ears. <laughs> Tell you what. So Captain as you cast, as you uh, blow the whistle, them. there's a soft, almost like chill that flows through the air as a singular, like, singular thunderhead just passes overhead. And as the thunder begins to like rumble inside of it, you can hear very sharp claws thudding on the deck as almost just like materializing out of the shadows itself is this very large mastiff soft gray color bright blue eyes and a collar around its neck with the name tag of Bowery <laughs> as yeah. the dog it comes is. over yep. and sits right next to you yep. a little Over nubbin of a tail wagging Oh. I, and Chara just like gets down on her knees and just starts petting it and loving on it. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? And he, being the goon that he is, he's all happy and he's like lapping at your face and just panting all over the place. I will tell you now that the that Beauregard is a pet, kind of like a ranger pet. You can command him mm -hmm. in battle. Nice. Uh, does he have, um, 
standard Shadow Master of stats, or is I it something will, special? I will send you Beauregard's stats. Gotcha. So I'm, I'm not going to lie. That's pretty Echo's much most... what he is. He's a Shadow Mavari. Oh, <laughs> freaking love it. Oh. Echo's probably most interested in that puzzle box. I figured with your curiosity, you'd be interested in what's in the box. <laughs> I mean, we agreed not opening it here, but that's what I'm most interested in. Tell you what, would you like to be the one to open it once we hit the shoulder? Yes. I think we can organize around that. As at this point, Cannonball figured, you know what, if she's died to come back once, we can do it again and we have a coffin. <laughs> With someone in it. <laughs> I mean, look, we'll get to that. Well, we have to dump we'll, the previous body out first. <laughs> we'll, we'll burn that coffin when we get there. Um... Okay, so that leaves, uh, let's see, puzzle box for Echo. I can't believe I am keeping the notes. That should be Pearl's job. <laughs> you assume they're not. Right. This is a joke, by the way. So it's Pearl, the quartermaster slash, you know. Yeah. You know, yeah. Hmm. Per Pearl's just kind of, you know, I, I think Pearl is is really kind of shell shocked at this point. Still, really, there's just been so so much she's trying to take in that she's, yeah. you know, she's more than cool with this. A anybody with high wisdom can see that Cannonball's kind of focusing on this to try to like keep people's attention off of the crap they just went through. It's like your loot, shinies. Look at the shinies. Distraction tactic. Probably You're all catch that. Exactly. Just jingling the keys. <laughs> That's it. You know. Look this you way, who, though. Look at the you amp. Can who, <laughs> you can see who's been a... The, the cannonball's been a dad, you know? Like, over here, look at the keys. All right. Mir. Oh. Yes. We still have a few funny things. Would you like the punchy gauntlet of magic? The... The, the, the what? What? He points to the gauntlet and the stones, and he says, Once we get to shore, I put stones in gauntlet. You punch things with magic in gauntlet. <sighs> There's that a... may have been how Grandfather was able to send Shara across town with a punch. Oh, there's a, a, a slight pause, and... Oh. <laughs> I'm not sure how to explain this. Um... Are we walking on all the landmines today? Is this what this session is all about? <laughs> no, no. This is... Well, it's one of those things that I, I really haven't explained the intricacies of it. So I'm going to just quickly rage as... My, I grow gigantic claws. Akin right. to, like, a werewolf. Oh. That won't fit. So, slight problem with that. <laughs> He's a witch! I transform somewhat when I rage, so certain things don't work. A magical item they usually transform with you. It's a question. Do they? <laughs> I mean, look, matey, they'd be, they be made for something human sized. If they don't resize to fit you when you put them on, we'll know right away. <laughs> look at Codger. Well? <laughs> well, what? Do, do you know if they resize? Matcha. 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 Ka Matcha. Ka Kodra's just like, Kodra doesn't know? <laughs> Sorry. Kodra. Kodra. This is like campaign Kodra. two, when That's everyone twice. was asking Keo to identify stuff. <laughs> oh yeah. god, that was fucking yeah. priceless. <laughs> Matcha, Matcha. Look at, sorry, look at Matcha. Did, did they resize? Matcha um, shrugs a bit and she's like, oh, normally most magical things will resize to fit the wearer. Oh, that'd be convenient. Even if they have long claws? 
Mm-hmm. Maybe. Maybe. Look, I, I would I, solve the. I only identify things. I don't make the rules. It would solve the issue I have of the one ability you use, Cannonball. Um, I can't do this when you use it. I mean, gee, but if you have a gauntlet, that'd be a weapon. Exactly. So, possibly? Possibly? We'll have to test that. I, and... Well... We also have someone who can use their fists as a weapon. True. I just want to open the box. Don't worry, Echo. He got first dibs at the box. <laughs> I just wonder what's in it. <laughs> and Echo, looking at this box, you can tell that it's not very hard. You could probably open it in about four moves. I was told not to do it on the ship. I'm trying. Okay. I'm trying. It's mostly because we have a bunch of innocents on board. We don't know what the fuck's inside. It's better safe than sorry than a rampaging like treant just, you know, going ham on the whole ship. Or you could just not be a coward at all. <laughs> That's the GM taunting you. <laughs> I know, and I want to. Right, me too. I'm like, biting don't my be teeth a coward. Like, no. Do it. Do it. Question is, can I get away with it before anyone can stop me? I mean, it's <laughs> only four moves. Uh, we're gonna have to roll die here. Okay. Oh, no. Light a hand, that shit. No, fuck no. Um, yeah, yeah she's doing it. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was a really low roll. <laughs> Rolled a three. No, she's doing it. <laughs> and she is she sleight of handing it, or is she just going? Yeah, she'll use yeah, she'll sleight of hand it. All right, go ahead and give me a sleight of hand. Seeing if uh, yeah, and of course uh, the dice are with me on that one. Twenty two. Can I see this? <laughs> What's your passive perception? Not twenty two. Uh, nope. No one sees Echo. Just like click, 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 click. <laughs> Echo does it subconsciously. <laughs> she's not. <laughs> she's not really thinking oh about it. She's God. just more looking at the box and click, click, click. Oh you shit! Like a fidget toy. Yeah. <laughs> and then and you uh, just click, 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 click. And as you do, I'd be more complicated than that. <laughs> the box opens, and this little. As the box opens, it fall, it pretty much falls apart to a bunch of cubes onto the ground as a small little ball of fur materializes in your hand and slowly takes form of the small kitten. Small kitten? It's, it's got like an orangish brown fur with like black, like intricate black streaks. It's, yeah, it's a triple. You're all fucked. <laughs> it's a triple and you're on a ship. Where have I seen this before? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Hide the triticale. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to give it a little scratches under the chin. And as it looks ears. up at you, you can see that it's got what looks to be almost like an, like a mask on. It's got like just like black markings on its face that almost resemble a mask. And it opens up its eyes and you just see soft red eyes. It's getting all the kitty scratches. And as it does that, you feel something bond with you. Do I have any knowledge that comes with that bond? You do not. All you know okay. is Kitty just bonded with you. I'm just gonna give it kitty scratches and, and it, just sit there and mind my own business and hope no one knows. It's just sitting there like <laughs> accepting the scratches is purring up a storm. Mm 
Okay, kick the remains of the box behind me. Hopefully, no noses. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say with a I'll say with a I'll say with a sleight of hand of twenty two, you're able to do that and just kick the the boxes like the remainder of the boxes under Jenka's bed. <laughs> there we go. Good luck, Jenka. <laughs> He's gonna be cleaning like weeks from now and be like, "What the hell? <laughs> Where's that box? We can open it. I don't know. You lost my box." <laughs> Anything else anyone's doing? Not opening anything. Well. Cannonball at this point, right, is going to look through the items, right, as he's kind of giving everybody their stuff, and he's going to say, well, anybody else claiming anything? I don't think so. Seems like the stuff that we aren't waiting for land to open up is, is being claimed. I'm just looking back at that Aeon of Fortitude. Pumps up con by two. Yeah. But cannot exceed double. max. Uh, and the stone is a an attuned item as well. It is attuned. I mean, technically, any of us could use it. None yeah. of us have the max con. Any of us could use it. Yeah. Just who has the available attunement for it, and or wants to drop something to attune to it. I mean, look, I'm already attuned to the. Necklace of Doom or whatever that thing's called. Wait, that thing doesn't require. Does it require tuned? Yes, it does. I'm looking to see <laughs> if I have. I, 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 I thought I attuned to something. I just didn't remember which one of them it was. But yes, it was the Necklace of Doom. Um, my quarter staff that has that pole vault thing on it. That really has nothing to do with. It's not attuned, is it? A pole vault? No, I don't think it is. It, that's the one that just. It, well, it's uh, my core. I can use my quarter staff as a pole vault. That's that's just an ability out of uh Midgard. That Midgard, Midgard. book right there. It's Midgard Heroes. Yeah, that's any stick. Okay. Um I don't actually see that I have any attuned items at all. Yeah, I don't think unless my punch drunk is an attunement item, I don't have nope. anything attuned myself. Nope. But now punch you probably can use con what's your um can I ask, would the con be used? My con's con? is 16. So if yeah. you can use it more, you're also up close. So, so, is, so is mine. Um, yeah. But I, I really think one of the barbarians should take it because they're going to be the ones taking most of our hits. That's true. I uh, have yeah. no room for it. Oh, wait. Oh. Yeah, I have no room. We have no what room. about Shara? Could Shara take it? Um... She currently has three items attuned to, so she'd have to give up one, and the one that she'd likely give up is the, the crossbow, which unfortunately would give her no ranged abilities. So I think she's probably better holding on to what she has right now. Yeah. So, I mean, if you're interested in the stone, you can take the stone. Yeah. Um, Pearl kind of looks at it and goes, well, there's, there's nothing I really need. We can always, you know put these away for the future but okay does pearl remember with everything the crab was hauling out that anything that was pulled out was a childhood memento of meaning to her nope it was there all was nothing. it was all junk and then the magic items random shit <laughs> okay he found a colander <laughs> yeah oh junk? my favorite I colander. Say precious art to be sold Yeah. They're not family portraits or anything, right? Just nice nope. paintings? Just paintings. Yeah, okay. The only thing that is reminiscent of your family is the, um, the bust, bust of, of your grandfather. grandfather. Yeah. Uh, per Pearl does not need that. that. 
that at this point she's kind of that would be about the last thing she would want um no she's she's just gonna shake her head and say no take the stone I mean, why don't, why don't you take the stone? I mean, at least it'd be used for now, and then if we find a better use for it later, we can always just change it up. Matt and it's Char and I are fairly resilient when we're uh, frenzied in combat. Both you be one of the few people who can bring us back or heal us if we get screwed over, so... Yeah, Keeping it's true. Keeping healer alive might be a good idea. It is pretty. It, pearl being pearl. Okay, uh, I will. I will take the. Um, hey, okay, don't that? leave the magic item in the bag to rot away. Um, <laughs> I guess what would we just call that? Yeah, um, no one ever does that. Aeon yeah, stone no of one. Aeon stone of fortitude. Yes. Yes. And so when I attune, my con will go up by two. Yeah. So pretty much yeah. when you attune to it, the stone will now float around your head. And as, as long as you've got the stone activated around your head, your constitution will increase by two. Okay, and I can activate it or deactivate it then? Is that... Uh, pretty... Like, deactivating it means you, like, are no longer attuned to it. Oh, okay. So now I have something floating around my head. Okay, I can deal with this. I guess. Well, as soon as we safely make landfall, Mir, I'll be sure, Mir, Mir, yeah, Mir, I said it right this time. Mir, I'll make sure to get that gauntlet set up for you. All right. Well, I think that does about it, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm gonna go visit my sister. See if she's awake yet. Going forward, maybe instead of, I know we're all very good at keeping secrets, um, maybe not. Like, I had every intention of discussing things, but after what happened at the afterwards, it, wasn't really didn't feel safe Cannonball's gonna just look at Echo here and just say well I have no problems with secrets mateys please in the future no repeat of that touching things unsafely yes can I have yep. your word on that sure <clears throat> As she tries to walk out with the cat, no one knows in the cat. <laughs> oh, and the cat's now just sitting on your shoulder, just like looking at everyone. <laughs> God. Where did that come from? What might this be? I don't know, I found it. Knowing. Where did it come from? It sounds Knowing... exactly like that. I don't know, I found it. Knowing <laughs> like <a> kid. <laughs> <laughs> and what happened the last time. Cannonball's gonna run a quick inventory of the stuff. You don't I'm see the box. Check. I'm gonna insight check. <laughs> Although I don't think I need to. She's making it very no, clearly obvious. Like, what? It sounds like a kid who's being in trouble with their parents right now. And, <laughs> where, and where may be the box, but, Echo? But you, uh, you said that you, I just found it, right? Mm-hmm. As you say that, that cat just goes, meow. And everyone just believes you just found it. Oh shit. No, that's uncomfortable. <laughs> oh god. You still did an inventory. Unle right? Unless somebody has a resistance or an immunity against charm effects. I have resistance. You can give me Elf. a you can give me a charisma saving throw then. Oh 
Is the dice with you? Uh, yeah. Uh, that is a natural 20 for a 19. <laughs> so, all right. You hear the Still cat. <laughs> you hear the cat just go meow. And all for for a moment, you're just like, oh, kitty. Ew. And, but that's it. Sorry. As your inquiry still stands. As okay. you can make that insight check if you want. Uh, yes. Uh... Nope, that's not a d20. That's a d20. There we go. Uh, ooh. Uh, 21. You want to make a deception check? Sure. With advantage. Okay. Yeah, yeah neither one of those is very good. Uh, nine. <laughs> ah. He's lying on the ten, ass. so nine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She wasn't trying. She was. Yeah, it wasn't well hid. <clears throat> Where did it come from, Echo? As everyone else is going, oh, kitty, and she's like, yep. I'm immune to its demonic charms. <laughs> Echo looks a little bit deflated. Look, I, I wasn't, didn't do it on purpose. It just kind of happened. What did? I was just looking at the box. And somehow managed to open it. I wasn't intending to. It just happened. You looked at a box that was technically a puzzle box. That's a very hard puzzle. Thought it would be a lot more complicated. Oh, than so that. you were paying attention. No, it was absent mindedly. I wasn't doing it on purpose. This. After I said to not open it. Look, it. <sighs> Shouldn't have taken four move. That would be a lot harder than that. Okay. The little cat is just sitting there, just like got Look, its tail. Doesn't that happen? It's just like it's just sitting down. It's got its little tail wrapped around its feet and just looking at everybody. Anything else you guys want to do? I think it's getting late. Um, uh, pardon me, Captain. Is uh, one of the survivors has found their way up to the top deck. Um, there's a little bit of. Sorry, did you knock on my door? How rude of you to just walk in here! No kidding. <laughs> I do believe Charlotte left door devil? open on her way. <laughs> um, I, 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 I'm sorry for the interruption, but there's been a bit of talk of arising amongst the. Uh, people down below as to what you plan to do with all of us um if it's not too much to ask we'd like to be dropped off at one of the fishing villages near the southern part of the island that's not too much to ask to be honest you weren't even going to be coming with us long term anyway so there's still plenty of island to go around, plenty of places to drop you off safely. So, how far away is the closest one? Uh, you guys are on the world map. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. So when just I... left tide light, like yep. literally an hour, like not even an hour, maybe an hour. A couple hours ago. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you're you're at you're technically still around tide light over here. Yes. The fishing village is. Right here. Ah, uh, how two days far away is that? Two days? Okay. If I'm remembering that each square is a day. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Each square okay. is a day. So about two days, yeah. Yeah, like I said, we weren't going to do a long journey with this many civilians, and to be honest, I don't think we have enough food to last that long anyway. So, yeah, that's probably not perfectly fine. <clears throat> so it's probably also running a little over capacity of what it's normally running. That too. Especially if we come across anything dangerous, so let's not go too far out into the water just to be safe.
Then is anybody gonna let Pim know those orders? Because Pim, <laughs> Pim's been kind of <laughs> sailing. <laughs> Pim's been kind of sailing blind at the moment. As like you, we're as, leaving. As to where? Outside, we're leaving. You guys realize that Pim has just been sailing around in a circle this entire time because nobody gave him any direction of where to go. God damn it, Pim! No, she said go south. The captain did definitely say go south. Yeah, and he's just going around in a circle because go south doesn't. He doesn't know. I mean, to go Another south of the turn. island or do south or what so he's just kind of doing this so he doesn't abruptly get everyone lost he's been yelled at multiple times i admire that yeah always got some trauma that he's got to work through <laughs> he's got trauma i just know the meaning of the word trauma he's slowly becoming yeah, a I mean, not campaign. everyone's throwing their grandfather into a wall of force lately as Jenka looks outside the window, we've gone past that floating plank three times now. God damn it, Pim! Someone tell Pim where we're heading, please. I didn't. I'm going to go check on the people down the med bay. And can someone please tell Shara to, for the love of the gods, do not blow that whistle again. For now. Whistle? Not whistle. She blew the whistle? The dog whistle. The whistle is no longer there, by the way. As you have summoned the oh. dog. Oh, okay. I didn't know if it, like, went back in the whistle after X amount of time or something, or if it's, like, nope. permanently out until dog You dies. have a permanent dog now. Fox. It's come full circle, Beauregard. It's come full circle. We'll see what happens. DVD. <laughs> I, you know what? It really has come full circle. This is the same part of the world, too. Yeah. Hello. Now, now, oh, now, no. what happens if you run into Cassius or his sister, and you've got Beauregard with you? I, I think that's a good thing. It'll scare off Cassius, right? Cassius is better. terrified of that thing. <laughs> Dog hunted him through the plains. <laughs> he did. One little thing, by the way, now that everybody's been somewhat occupied or is going off to do their own thing or whatnot, mm -hmm. Cannonball's gonna most probably get his hands on that saxophone. <laughs> oh god okay one no. more one more from and the you, collection and you pick up the saxophone do you nope. play it not indoors i'd probably go on the deck first okay that's probably a good idea <laughs> you know we it, she did explain to us that it fired out the you know uh, out of the music hole of the saxophone for lack of a better term here out of the the mouth of the instrument and uh, yep. i i don't need that you know slamming a whatever into the you know into the nearest wall. As you go out to the deck, kind of probably, I would assume be close to the, like, the edge of the ship, just firing out into the, the water. Mm-hmm. Okay. Go ahead and give me a performance roll. With pleasure. That is an 18, as we an have 18. to perform. Surprisingly enough, everyone who's on deck hears cannibal perform rather well with a saxophone as you begin to play cannonball you this magical essence begins to flow around the horn itself as the barrels on either like on either side of the horn like the bass horn here begin to shoot off what look to be magical bursts of energy just firing them out into the water Ooh, i like this <laughs> now cannonball's gonna want to experiment a little bit here and he's gonna let go of the saxophone while still blowing at it of course and seeing if his mage hands can play the instrument give me a performance roll let's see it that is a what's 14 plus 7 I can't math 21 21 yep and how many mage hands do you have uh I am currently total what's our total level of the, of the party right now I'm, I'm We're at six, six I believe yeah. yeah six uh I will tell you that in one second as I believe it, it, it levels up the cantrip like other cantrips and gives me one extra with every like milestone I think I have two right now yeah but what uh, what level of whatever you're casting do you have because you have to go off of that 
for what's their highest spell slot spell level is that the question no what like is your level six collectively but you're Correct. also a tri-class um what do you mean i'm also a tri-class because yeah like if you're level six and you're a tri-class it could be like Two, two, and no, two. the spells still, they still level up with you, though. Cantrips yeah, still level up. Okay. Still yeah, level it takes your total because caster Ash, level. Because gotcha. Ash was a level, like, 17 fighter, and she still had the level 17, uh, like, cantrip abilities as gotcha. a level one sorcerer. Okay. Yeah, they simplified it for 5e. Okay. It's just your total level. It's like sneak attack. So how many how many mage hands do you have? Uh, I didn't confirm that for you, but I'm pretty sure it's two. It's two, yeah. Okay, so if you have two, you, you're still going to need to be able to hold on to the horn. Mm -hmm. because it, it's going to require no if you use two yeah i mean normal saxophones you yeah. hold on the two right yeah. they're strapped onto you but like yep there's no strap on this one by the way <laughs> uh, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to jury you're gonna have you're gonna have to get a you're gonna have to get a strap yourself it didn't come with it that's fine we have gunsmithing exactly for this reason <laughs> but yeah you, you're able to focus uh to make sure that the mage hands produce um the uh correct notes as you're still firing it off though i will say that if you're going to do this it is going to be like a continued concentration check in order to be yeah. able to play the instrument i figured as much i was just wondering if i could play it with my hands or if i can play it with my mage hands because of how my class works that's just all i was looking into <laughs> interesting yeah, I'm going to have to talk to you more in details about this stuff, but yes. This is very interesting. I like it. Yeah. Cannonball <clears throat> seems uh, oddly pleased with himself as the instrument releases burst after burst off the edge of the ship. I had to go make a kitten pouch into my uh, wardrobe. Right. <laughs> right. So, uh, as everyone files out of the captain's quarters... Um, Shara will hang back uh, and approach Jenka for just a moment here. Is at this point everyone kind of left? Except Shara. Uh, yeah, I'm talking about everyone else, though. So it's just like you see it. I mean, Cannonball just went to make sure Pip was going to, you know, steer us in the right direction as per your order. So yes, Cannonball out of there. I feel okay. once out of the principal's office that she just did bad things. <laughs> Echo okay. brought her oh, yeah. pet to school. <laughs> okay, yeah. So it's uh, yeah. So it's just me and Shara. Okay, I was just trying to get a sense of who's in the room. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yes. As um, as Pearl has has quietly gone out. So, now, okay, at the point where we were, we started. Okay, oh, oh, um, hold on a sec, because uh, Jenka and. Oh, Okay, but Codger was in a bubble. Is he still in that bubble? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Uh, Scarin left, and he's still carrying Codger in a bubble because he hasn't been told it's okay to release him. Okay, I guess we'll help. Uh, so Pearl... Pearl isn't happy with that, so she wants to rectify that, but she realizes that Shara's talking to Jenka, so this isn't the time, so she'll sort of step outside and, and see if she can get Sarin to stay with Hodger there near the door. So once once everyone is out of the the cabin, um, Carol will just kind of walk up to to Jenkin and be like, "So, hey, um, everything that happened back back in Tidelight uh, when you were headed to the ship, and I said I would, I had to go look for my family." Uh, I just uh, wanted to thank you because you didn't have to wait for me and I, I saw that you waited you didn't have to I, I would have understood but you did wait so thank you for that you don't need to thank me but I think I do um because, like, it's... I mean, I'm trying real hard not to think of everything that just happened back there because I just lost 
everything. And that's that's going to hurt real bad, I'm sure, when the time comes. But uh, if you hadn't been there with the ship when I jumped off those docks, yeah, I don't know, man. That would have been bad. So you, you, uh, yeah, thank you. You haven't lost everything. You won't know what that feels like. You're still lucky. I've lost a lot. You still have family? Yeah, maybe. Homes can be rebuilt. Towns can be rebuilt. They can be rebuilt, but they're never quite the same, are they? As long as you still have family. That's what matters, right? Yeah, I mean... They're alive. I, I assume. I had still haven't gone to see them. But... Yeah, I don't know. With everything that's on the horizon... I'm kind of thinking maybe some distance will probably do them some good. Let's just hope the trouble doesn't reach them then. Consider yourself lucky. I'm thinking I might ask them to go um, down below to one of the Picaro settlements. I think that might be the safest place for them. Especially if it's in an area that a lot of sea monsters won't reach them too terribly frequently anyway. But, I mean, even if they're alive, again, with everything that's on our horizon specifically, I don't know if I should ever really be around them anymore. You know, I mean, look what we've brought to two cities already. I don't want to bring more of that to them. That might be for the best, honestly. Especially if you've triggered something or something's after you right now. It might be for the best. In which case, I have lost everything. But, you know, I'm still alive, so I guess that's fine. Well, again, you're still in contact with them. That's what matters. Yeah, maybe. I, I just wanted to say thank you, that's all. Well, you're welcome. And Shara will make her exit. Uh, Pearl pokes her head in and says, excuse me, Captain? Yes? Uh, do you want Hodger kept in that bubble? You can let him out. Could you ask then that he be let out? You're the captain. Just let him know you had my blessing. Thank you. She'll so, kind of lock the door behind her and just kind of lay on the bed, just kind of staring at the ceiling for the time. And as you do that, you hear the ticking in that pocket one begin to slow down. Can I check it? As you open it up, something doesn't seem right. Ticking is slowing down, but the hands are moving faster than ticking. Does it look like it's getting closer to the countdown number? A bit. 
but as you see it begins to move forward it then moves backwards and then it moves forwards and then it moves backwards and then it just stops completely she quickly goes over to her bag pulls out some journals and is kind of furiously looking through them before she stops on the page she's looking for and reads it a moment. I don't know if this is good or bad, but it could be near one of the seals or another watch or something worse. And then there's the outside you hear in the distance a horn blow. very mournful and haunting do I recognize this sound it's almost reminiscent of what you heard that night Just a mournful horn calling out. Do you going to immediately look out the window just to see if she sees anything? And as you throw out, you open up your window to look out amongst the sea. You and those of you who are on deck see a ship rise up out of the wind. Screams, well, not screams, but hollers and battle cries begin to echo off the deck as it makes its full ascension onto the waves. As you can see, malformed humans on the ship, old battle wounds dug deep into their chest, into their rotting flesh. Strange, demonic like Demon- creatures almost clinging on to the masts themselves or hanging off of the edge of the ship. And as you're taking this all in, the ship itself on the front opens its mouth. Oh, fuck, 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 fuck. And this is where we are ending for today. No! I mean, I have to get to bed, but no! No! He's no bueno, no me gusta. I don't like my cat digging at the door. But yeah, fun times, fun times. But that is going to do it for us tonight. Uh, leave you with a little bit of a uh, oh shit moment. As we will come back to that in two weeks on our next episode on the 21st. Um, if this is your first time here, this is not the only show that we do. Normally, on this upcoming Saturday, we would have another episode of Wayward Wanderers, which is our Pathfinder 2 Extinction Curse campaign, but there will be no show this weekend as a couple of the players cannot make it. Um, so we'll, we will be back here on the channel on Monday... Uh, for the start of the second act of Destiny Forge Campaign 3. Um, it's going to be interesting, I can say that. Um, Friday scenes send you stuff still, actually. Yeah, I still need stuff from a couple people. Um, but yeah, so that will be kicking off at 8 o'clock Pacific Time as we kick off Act 2. Uh, and then on... Tuesday is Tuesday another episode of Star Wars for you guys. It's Tuesday is Star Wars, yes. Okay, yep. So on Tuesday we will have another episode of our Star Wars campaign of Tales of the Outer Rim, which is run by Tiltbot. Um, coming back on Thursday we will have another episode of Mass Effect Horizons, which is a fifth edition Mass Effect mod run by uh, Zoro. Um, and I believe if all goes according to plan, fingers crossed. 
on the 16th will be the first episode of Withered Wastes the Southern Frontier, which is going to be a sort of new campaign slash continuation of or continuing story in the southern frontier of the Cursed Island that everybody is on. Um, can't wait for that as not only is our original cast returning, we do have a new cast member that is going to be joining us as Malz's board is jumping into the fray with us. So that's going to be fun. Uh, a new old cast. A new member. old cast member because Malz has been on, on the channel before. <laughs> um, But yeah, so that is going to do it for us for now. Thank you everybody for tuning in. And we will catch you all on Monday for uh, Act 2 of Destiny Forge. Till then, see you later. Goodbye, everyone.